In the hotel, a room cleaner named Yao Bin was walking along the corridor. His colleague called to him and said that the guests of room 2201 had just checked out. Let him go and put everything in order there. Yao Bin agreed and thought that he just had to wait a little until he received his salary and paid for his education. His mother will rest a little for two days, instead of going out early in the morning to sell pancakes. He headed to the indicated room, and at the same moment a guy and a girl came out. Yao Bin saw his girlfriend Zayo Bei, and she asked what he was doing here. The guy grinned and then pulled her closer to him and said that it was clear that he worked here because he couldn't rent a room here like they did. Can he afford to stay in a hotel like Binhai? Yao Bin dropped his tools and grabbed Guo Shuai's clothes, telling him to remove his hands. Zayo Bei hugged him and told him to stop. Yao Bin asked why she was protecting him. Guo Shuai hit Yao Bin and he flew out onto the balcony. Guo Shuai put his foot on him and asked, Does he want to hit him? So Zhang Zayo Bei is his girlfriend, right? But she's still with him. Didn't he understand it? An idiot like him dares to compete with him? He doesn't deserve her. He threw him some bills and said that he should take the money and get out of here. Guo Shuai led Zayo Bei away, and she turned around to look at Yao Bin. He clutched the bills in his hands and said that let him wait until he gets rich. He will pay the price of that he is sure. Suddenly, the main system started up. The offended spirits are disturbed. If he accumulates enough points, he will get a chance to develop and expand the underworld. He needs to master the underworld and reach the pinnacle of life. Yao Bin remained sitting on the balcony, and the system window was shining in front of him. Some guys in the alley were lighting candles, and Yao Bin looked at the huge clock on the building. He thought, what is this expansion of the underworld? The system reported a mission for newcomers. He needs to catch a little ghost and also experience level 1 fear. Quest Location Emerald District, 3rd Floor, Room 301 Quest must be completed before 1 a.m. Yao Bin thought, Emerald District, 3rd Floor. Isn't it opposite his house? He can't believe that the process of expanding the underworld involves catching ghosts, let alone that this ghost is right in front of his house. The system reported that for this, he would receive 100 fear points and a lucky talisman to suppress demons. An image of a talisman appeared in the system window, and Yao Bin thought that it looked like he could buy tools in the system with fear points. The system reported the newcomer's advantage, his wounds were healing. Yao Bin looked at his hands and saw that the wounds and calluses on them were slowly disappearing. He abruptly rose to his feet and thought in surprise, has everything been completely healed? It looks like he just gained enormous power. If he works to perfect the expansion of the underworld, his life will improve. No one will ever insult him again. He took off his janitor's uniform and threw it on the floor. After a while, he returned home and opened the door, telling his mother that he was home. Isn't he too late? His displeased mother met him and told him that today was the full moon. What if he gets into trouble? Yao Bin did not answer and began to take off his shoes, thinking that let her not worry. He is not afraid of these troubles because they are the ones who should be afraid of him. His mother set the table and said that he should eat first while she warmed up the soup. Yao Bin took a bowl of rice and asked, No one lives in the apartment opposite, right? She replied that this morning, when she was taking out the trash, she saw a lady coming out of the house. She is very beautiful, even better than a celebrity, but she finds it strange. Yao Bin looked up from his food and asked, Is it strange? What exactly? She replied that judging by her style and manners, she was a girl from a rich family. But why did she settle in this bad area? Besides, this apartment remained abandoned for so long, doesn't that really scare her? Yao Bin started eating again and thought that the system told him to come at midnight and catch the ghost in her apartment. His mother brought soup and told him to stop talking. Let him eat, she is more than sure that her dishes are much tastier than the food that the courier delivers. Yao Bin received a message on his phone and thought that he should become a courier. He read the message from Zayo Bei. She apologized and wrote that she was very guilty. They should break up. Yao Bin wrote, what happened? If she has problems, then let her say it. They can solve everything together. Suddenly, his mom slammed her fingers on the table and told him to stop playing on his phone. If he goes to bed, let him go to school tomorrow. Yao Bin agreed and immediately began to eat. After dinner, he went to bed and read another message from Zayo Bei. She thanked him and wrote that he could not solve the problem. Let him not ask her anymore. Yao Bin thought that she would rather give herself to that idiot Guo Shuai than let him help her. He is of no use to her. He must become stronger, let her wait a little, he will definitely help her. 
With these thoughts, he left his room and headed to the next apartment. He stopped at the door of apartment 301 and collected his thoughts. Then he knocked and the door opened quietly. Yao Bin cowered in fear and the system reported that he had received 10 fear points. He thought, why only 10 points? He can't even afford you a talisman. He looked into the apartment and saw a light in one of the rooms. He trembled again with fear and the system reported that he had received several hundred fear points. Received a mahogany sword for exorcism. Yao Bin looked at his watch and thought that three minutes had already passed. Why can't he even hear footsteps? He put the rewards in his inventory and crept up to the bathroom and looked inside. His eyes widened in fear. He saw a bandaged girl standing in front of the mirror and candles were lit on the sink. Yao Bin swallowed his saliva again and calmed down a little, taking a closer look at the girl. He thought, it seems she doesn't see him. The girl began to whisper the name Mo Shi Yao and Yao Bin, think he understood she is calling someone using the mirror. But who? A light breeze blew in the room and the flames on the candles flickered. Yao Bin looked at his reflection in the mirror and saw that someone's rotten hands were reaching out to him. The evil girl put her hand on his shoulder and asked, are they looking for her? Yao Bin looked at her hand and the system reported that he had received several 1,000 fear points. He acquired the skill of using a yin and yang sword. The girl turned to Yao Bin and raised her finger to her lips, telling him to be quiet. Then she looked at the evil spirits and told him not to look back. The evil spirits laughed and Yao Bin decided to use the talisman. After that, a talisman appeared in his hand and the evil spirits sensed something was wrong and quickly jumped back. But Yao Bin turned around and ran after her, then stuck the talisman to her forehead and she began to scream heart-rendingly. The evil spirits began to writhe in agony and the bright color of the talisman began to burn it. Yao Bin covered his eyes from the bright light and after a few seconds he saw that only a spot on the floor remained from the evil spirits and the system reported that he had completed the mission for the beginner. He had caught the little ghost. He took the first step to expand the underground world for which he received 1,000 yuan of the underground world. Yao Bin looked at the system window and thought, 1,000 yuan of the underworld. He turned around to check on the girl and saw that she was lying on the floor and not moving. He walked up to her and asked if she was okay. He awkwardly averted his eyes to the side and extended his hand to her. After that, he brought a blanket and covered her with it. Then he picked her up in his arms and walked past the mirror, but suddenly stopped when he saw that she was looking at him with red eyes. He immediately looked at her, but she was unconscious and he was scared. He looked in the mirror again and thought that she scared him. He hopes it's just an illusion. After that, he went into the bedroom and put her on the bed. The blanket fell off her chest a little and Yao Bin pursed his lips, then came closer to her face, but immediately pulled back, thinking, what is he thinking about? He won't dare. Suddenly, the girl hit him sharply on the cheek and he exclaimed, why did she hit him? She covered herself with a blanket and asked, does he know that he just ruined her business? Yao Bin exclaimed, her business? He pointed to the bathroom and told her to open her eyes. There was a ghost in the mirror. She would have lost her life if he had been late. He rubbed his cheek and asked why she was acting so stupid. She replied that she herself had summoned this ghost. Yao Bin looked at her incomprehensibly and she said that she had no more than a month left. She just wanted to prolong her life. He wondered if she had summoned a ghost to prolong her life. He opened the system characteristics and saw that it was a little ghost. She was born in the yin years, level 4, and evil level 4 stars. Reason for being on earth. Searching for a replacement. Yao Bin sat down on the bed and asked, did she say that she summoned a ghost to continue her life? That is, she will allow the ghost to have fun in her body and live for her. She replied that of course, this is not true. Selling yourself to the underworld to extend your life does not mean replacing it in order to continue living. Yao Bin agreed and asked, but who told her that selling to the underworld could prolong her life? She replied irritably that she did not ask his opinion. It's already midnight. What is he doing in her house? What does he need? Yao Bin said that he suspects that someone is trying to take control of her body in order to deceive her loved ones. She exclaimed that this would never happen. She would not allow it. Yao Bin asked her to calm down. This is just a guess. Because the ghost she summoned was a crying demon, and these creatures are looking for a replacement. So he thinks the person who asked her to summon this ghost wouldn't want her to live. The girl fell silent, and then squeezed the blanket tighter and replied that that man was her dad. Yao Bin was very surprised and remained silent. 
Out of anger, he clenched his hand into a fist and said that he had been through this too. He knew what it was like to be betrayed, so he would help her. He went to the system store and decided to look at the description of the notebook of life and death. This book records the dates of birth and death of all living beings. Yao Bin told the girl not to worry, he knows a way to prolong her life. Her name is Mo Shi Yao, right? She confirmed his words and Yao Bin smiled, telling her to wait one minute. Mo Shi Yao looked at him incredulously and Yao Bin decided to buy a notebook, but the system reported that he did not have enough fear points. A suicide note costs 100,000 fear points. Yao Bin smiled nervously and thought that this was so much. He caught a ghost today. He almost died and only earned 3 win 100 fear points. Why does this notebook cost 100,000 points? How will he get such a large amount in such a short time? Mo Shi Yao thanked him and said that she would accept his help. Yao Bin abruptly grabbed her hand and said that he would guarantee her that he would do everything in his power to help her. She waved his hand away and said that it was late, it was time for him to leave. Yao Bin listened to her and stopped, saying that she should never give up. Mo Shi Yao lay down on the bed and told him to leave, he talks too much. She smiled, and meanwhile Yao Bin came out of her apartment and thought that he should get more points to get the notebook of life and death. Morning came, the alarm rang, and Yao Bin turned it off. A system window appeared in front of him and asked if he wanted to accept a new mission. Yao Bin agreed and the system informed him that he needed to catch a big ghost, the third level of fear. Location, Room 106 West Building, Pan High Middle School. Time, July 19. Yao Bin thought, Room 6, West Building, Pan High Middle School. Isn't this his class? Everything will happen tomorrow. If so, will something terrible happen in his class tomorrow? Today the ghost was level 1, and the next ghost will be level 3. Is he really going to be able to handle this? Can he take a day off? He remembered Ma Shi Yao's words that her father told her to summon a ghost. Out of excitement, he chewed his nail to the root and accepted the task with the thought that he would save her. The next day Yao Bin went to school and sat down at his desk. Suddenly Guo Shuai threw all his textbooks and notebooks off his desk and said that he should not forget to pack his books. His mother worked very hard to buy them for him. Yao Bin looked at him annoyed and another guy from the class told Yao Bin to hurry up. If he lost them, he would not be able to buy them back. Yao Bin wanted to pick up the notebook, but this guy stepped on it and Yao Bin thought, why does Zio Bei choose to date an idiot like Guo Shuai and then tell him about his suffering? It was time for class. Yao Bin felt something and thought, is the third level ghost approaching? Suddenly Zio Bei suddenly stood up from the table and grabbed her stomach. Her friend called out to her and asked what happened to her. Zio Bei straightened up abruptly, then arched her back and laughed terribly. The rest of the students were scared and Zio Bei put her hands in her mouth. Yao Bin immediately jumped up and rushed to help her, but Guo Shuai blocked his way and asked what he wanted to do. Yao Bin said that she was not fine, he had to take her to the hospital. Guo Shuai asked, Zio Bei, can he really call her that? Apparently he forgot that she is now his girlfriend, let him mind his own business. Yao Bin said that then let him take her to the hospital. Guo Shuai smirked and then grabbed him by the clothes and asked who he was to command him. The rest of the students began to whisper. The guy whispered to his friend that Yao Bin is such a coward. When Guo Shuai took his girlfriend, he didn't even say a word. Now that she is sick, he decided to prove himself. His friend told him to lower his voice. Who dares to go against Guo Shuai? Yao Bin called the system and had asked if he wanted to use the buffalo tear. Yao Bin agreed and thought it was good that he read horror books yesterday to gain more fear points. He hopes it will work. He pulled back his lower eyelid and dropped a buffalo tear onto his eye. He looked at Zio Bei and saw a dark aura emanating that enveloped her entire body. She took her hands out of her mouth and froze in place, then turned around and grinned. Yao Bin gritted his teeth and saw that one of Guo Shuai's friends was blocking his way. Yao Bin got angry and told him to leave or he would die. The guy laughed and asked, did they hear that? Yao Bin, being a coward, dared to threaten him. He hugged him and said that let him go with him, he would show him how to behave correctly. Zio Bei's gaze fell on this guy and suddenly she put her hands on his shoulders. The guy turned around and asked what is it. Suddenly she bit into his ear and he screamed in pain. His friends got scared and the system informed Yao Bin that Fu Haiji, Guo Shuai and Bai Luo became scared. He receives 3000 fear points. Yao Bin thought, this system can collect fear points from other people. 
The guy called out to Guo Shuai and asked him to save him. But Guo Shuai backed away and asked his friends why they were still standing. Let them go and help him. The guys grabbed Zio Bei and took her away from their friend, but it was too late. Zio Bei completely bit off his ear. The guy rose to his feet, but Zio Bei immediately attacked him and the system again reported the fear points he had received. Yao Bin looked at this calmly and Guo Shuai began to get very worried. His friends stayed away and Yao Bin said that he thought they were brave. Why don't they save him? The other disciples agreed with him and told Guo Shuai that if he did not help, Lao would lose his second ear. He's his best friend, isn't he? Let him stop staring and finally do something. Guo Shuai remained silent and Yao Bin said that if no one does this, then he will save him. He walked up to Zio Bei, hiding the talisman behind his back, and she looked up at him. Immediately after this, Yao Bin attached a talisman to her forehead and it began to glow. Zio Bei stopped and Lao immediately ran away from her. The students began to ask what was going on. One touch from Yao Bin on Zhang Zio Bei's head is enough to calm her down. It's amazing. Guo Shuai coughed into his fist and said that he was a dirty rat, that by pure chance he was able to help in some way. He hugged Zio Bei and told him to get out, he could take care of his girlfriend himself. He led her to the exit and Yao Bin thought, does he want to show off in front of the whole class? He is just a non-entity. Suddenly the amulet fell from Zio Bei's forehead and his friends told him to run, he needed to stay away from her. Guo Shuai was scared and looked down at Zio Bei's blood-stained face. He screamed and started running, she ran after him and wanted to grab him, but only tore his pants and almost fell. She looked at him with a creepy smile, then rushed towards him and extended her hand to him. She chuckled and Guo Shuai asked the others what were they looking at. Let them save him. His friends stood aside and one of them said that he would go first. Another friend asked why don't he go first. Yao Bin received fear points again and Guo Shuai asked him to save him. One of the girls covered her mouth and said that Guo Shuai's pants were wet. It turned out that Guo Shuai wet himself from fear, he began to cry, and Zio Bei continued to approach him. Yao Bin decided to buy another ghost amulet and place this on Zio Bei's forehead. She stopped, and he told Guo Shuai that if he wanted him to save him, he had to fulfill two promises first. First, let him break up with Zio Bei. Secondly, he needs to apologize to him. Guo Shuai replied that he promised him, now let him save him. Yao Bin smiled and said that he should take one step back then. Guo Shuai crawled away from Zio Bei and asked like this. Suddenly, he ran sharply towards the exit and Yao Bin told him to stop. But what about his promise? The teacher's voice came from around the corner. He asked what he promised him. He went inside and all the students saw a bald, older man who clearly did not shine with beauty. Guo Shuai pointed her finger at Yao Bin and said that he was fighting in class and also faked ghosts to scare them. He even insulted other girls. The rest of the students said that Guo Shuai was lying, but the teacher would believe him no matter what because he was his nephew. Another disciple said that Yao Bin was in trouble this time. The teacher adjusted his glasses and asked Yao Bin, does he remember the mantissa they learned at school? He doesn't care about the girls themselves, but he won't allow that in class. What would they do outside of this room? Let him get out of here now. Yao Bin replied that he did not do this. The teacher got angry and told him to come with him. He will see what the principal says, knowing about his misdeeds. Yao Bin replied that he was not the type to insult other students. It was all Guo Shuai. At this time, Zio Bei extended her hand towards Guo Shuai and a dark aura shifted towards him. The teacher asked if he had any proof of what he just said. At that moment, Guo Shuai laughed and attacked Zio Bei, saying that he would kiss her. He licked it and said that he missed her so much. The students were surprised and someone asked, He is brave, isn't he? How can he do this in public? The teacher just asked for evidence, didn't he? Here he comes, now they will see what he says. The teacher walked into the classroom and called out to Guo Shuai, telling him to stop. Guo Shuai looked at him and asked, What is it? The teacher took off his glasses and told him to go to his office now. He rubbed his face tiredly and thought that he should get it out of here before his friends spread any rumors about this incident. Guo Shuai blushed and told the teacher that he looked so grown up, he loved him. He started taking off his shirt and said that he was in love with him. Will he be his lover? Guo Shuai extended his tongue again and the teacher grabbed his hands to stop him. Guo Shuai knocked him to the floor and the teacher asked the students what were they looking at. Let them remove it quickly. One of Guo Shuai's friends tried to pull him away, 
but an ominous aura threw him away. Students and teachers began to crowd outside the office and ask, Guo Shuai has gone crazy, hasn't he? The director approached them from behind and stood behind the teacher. She looked inside the classroom in shock and suddenly turned around, sensing the presence of the director. She covered her mouth in shock and he asked what they would all do. She pointed her finger at her colleague and said that student Guo Shuai had started harassing teacher Ren. The director got angry and asked what she said. Suddenly Yao Bin felt a light aura and directed it towards Guo Shuai with his fingers. The light aura dispersed the dark one and Guo Shuai finally woke up. The teacher immediately pushed him away and one of the students said that she did not expect that their relationship could be so good. Her friend agreed with her and said they were pretty close. The teacher quickly buttoned his shirt and Guo Shuai looked around in bewilderment. He noticed the principal and the crowd of laughing students and quickly jumped to his feet, calling Yao Bin a dirty rat. He made him humiliate himself like that. He quickly approached him and said that he would crush him. In response, Yao Bin clenched his teeth and at the same second the teacher hit Guo Shuai in the face. He looked at his teacher in shock and he asked how dare he bully his friend. Let him apologize now. Guo Shuai called out to his uncle in shock, and he adjusted his glasses, quietly saying that the director was looking at them. Let him just pretend he's sorry, they'll pay him later. Yao Bin said that he did not hear. Guo Shuai got angry and said that he was very sorry. The principal closed his eyes and then told teacher Ren and Guo Shuai to follow him to his office. They followed him and Guo Shuai finally turned around, looking at Yao Bin with fury. After that, he went to fetch the director, and the girls surrounded Yao Bin. One of them said that this performance was so funny, just amazing. He is the best. Now he is their idol. But Yao Bin did not pay attention to them. He walked up to Zio Bei and lightly touched her shoulder, and she looked at him with a creepy smile. After that, a system window appeared in front of Yao Bin, and the system congratulated him on catching an adult ghost. By continuing to expand the underground world, he received a reward of 10 yuan of the underground world. A new task has appeared, he needs to catch the demon. The demon can catch ghosts, which is on the same level as him. This task has the fourth level of difficulty. The demon is located in the amusement park on Shitu Street, Song Shug City, appearance time is 10 p.m. Yao Bin thought that he only had 60 fear points now, which meant that he needed 40 more to buy that notebook. He agreed to the task and thought that the higher the level of the mission, the more points he could get. He must do everything possible to get enough points to save Mo Shi Yao. After classes ended, all the students went outside and someone called Yao Bin with his hand. Yao Bin walked in and saw a group of several guys in front of him. One of them said that at half past nine in the evening, at the amusement park on Shitu Street, Ying Hao wants to meet him. Yao Bin asked why he was looking for him. The guy didn't answer and showed him the photo, saying that the meeting would take place at half past ten, he shouldn't be late. Yao Bin was horrified when he saw that the photo showed Zio Bei tied to a chair. He ran to the amusement park and thought that he would definitely save her. After a while, he finally ran into the park and caught his breath. Ying Hao said that he came after all, he has courage. Yao Bin asked where is Zio Bei? Ying Hao hugged Guo Shuai and said that he attacked his brother, he must help them fix the situation. He pointed back and said they would play a game. Zio Bei is in this scary house. If he finds her first, he will win. He can take her, but if he fails, they will both be sold. Yao Bin agreed and said that he was confident that he could reach her before him. Ying Hao pointed his finger to the side and said that he was mistaken. He is not competing with him, but with the sorcerer Zhang. Yao Bin looked at the entrance and told Ying Hao that he had one more condition. They must go inside together. Guo Shuai asked, has he completely lost his shame or what? How dare he offer him such a thing? Yao Bin shrugged and asked, what's wrong? Is he really afraid to come in? Ying Hao quietly told Guo Shuai that if Yao Bin was scared, they should go with him. Guo Shuai asked in a whisper, didn't he say that there was a ghost there? Why should they do this? Ying Hao put his hand on his shoulder and told him not to be afraid, that ghost listens to him, so he won't be harmed. They went inside, and Yao Bin thought that this cowardly Guo Shuai would help him gain more fear points. They ended up in a creepy room, and Guo Shuai said that this ghost house is used to scare someone. He turned to Yao Bin and said that if he kneels down and apologizes to him, he will be merciful and let him go. Yao Bin received fear points and moved on. The sorcerer followed and thought that he had put a lot of effort into raising the ghost living inside. 
A high school student like him has no chance of beating this. But if this is the case, he should turn it into Jiangxi, the body will fulfill his loss. Someone's hand touched Guo Shuai's feet, and he exclaimed in fear that it was a ghost. His hands trembled and Ying Hao began to worry. Yao Bin again received fear points and Ying Hao, raising his puppet hand from the ground, said that it was fake. Let him look at his panties. They are magicians, and there is a sorcerer with him, so don't let him be so scared. Suddenly all three felt something, and the sorcerer told them not to worry. He's here, these ghosts won't touch them. He thought that it was obvious that he did not call Jiangxi. Could there be other ghosts here? Yao Bin pointed his finger at Guo Shuai in fear, and said that there was something behind him. Guo Shuai cried out of fear, and the ghostly warrior put a blade to his throat. He began to slowly turn around, and the sorcerer told him not to look back. Guo Shuai looked at him pleadingly, and asked him to save him. The sorcerer prepared himself, and said that it was a demon. After that, he waved his hand and hit the ghost with his weapon, but the ghost remained in place. The sorcerer thought, this ghost was not scared away by his Kayan sword. Guo Shuai remained in place, shaking with fear, and the ghost grabbed the sorcerer by the neck, beginning to strangle him. Yao Bin collected fear points from them again, and thought that he had finally collected 100,000 points, the time had come. After that, amulets swirled around him, and he took out his sword, telling them to leave it to him. The ghost released the sorcerer, and Ying Hao told Yao Bin that even the sorcerer could not defeat the ghost. Where is he going? Guo Shuai said that now is not the time to show off. The sorcerer recovered and thought, does he think that he is risking their lives to show off? Today he will definitely know its power. Yao Bin looked at the characteristics of the ghost and found out that it is a fifth level male demon and loves to eat delicious food. Yao Bin thought, does this demon seriously like to eat good food? He asked the ghost to spare them, then he would give him some dumplings. The sorcerer got angry and asked if he thought he could negotiate with him using food. Yao Bin ignored him and told the ghost that he could also offer spicy soup. He doesn't have much money, so this is the best he can give him. The ghost peered into his face and Yao Bin answered him in the same way, and the sorcerer continued to lie on the floor, fearfully covering his head. The ghost flew up to Yao Bin and said that he wanted food. A system window popped up in front of Yao Bin and Ying Hao asked the sorcerer to release his ghost. They must finish him off and leave this place. Yao Bin heard these words and turned around, seeing evil spirits in the darkness. The evil girl rushed towards them and Guo Shuai thought that this ghost was terrible. Ying Hao laughed and said that this is what he expected from the crying demon. He smiled terribly and the crying demon quickly approached them. Guo Shuai smiled and thought that Yao Bin would finally die. The demon had already approached Yao Bin and opened its mouth and Guo Shuai told the ghost to kill this dirt. But the demon girl bowed to Yao Bin and called him his excellency. Ying Hao asked what happened. Isn't this ghost so powerful? The sorcerer replied that this ghost was truly powerful, but not like the main ghost. Ying Hao hit him on the head and said that he was a liar. Yao Bin grinned and told them to discuss their problems when they got out of here. Let them tell you where Zio Bei is now. The demon girl turned around and headed towards Guo Shuai, and he fearfully asked the ghost not to kill him. Ying Hao said that if he said a word, he would kill him. The demon slapped Ying Hao and Yao Bin told him to shut up or die. Guo Shuai waved his hands and said that Zio Bei is not here, she is at karaoke. Yao Bin thought, if she was at karaoke now, then why didn't Ying Hao let Guo Shuai speak? Something is wrong here. He pointed his finger at them and said that the three of them should get out of here. The two guys and the old man ran towards the exit, and Yao Bin told the demon girl to follow them. Let her report to him if they act suspiciously. After that, Yao Bin smiled at the ghost, and they went to eat dumplings together. While well, the ghost happily ate the dumplings, and Yao Bin checked the rewards. The system congratulated him on overthrowing the main demon. He received 100,000 underground yuan and successfully built the first guest mansion. Yao Bin thought that he could use fear points to buy special items in the marketplace. What are underground yuan for? The system window showed him the exchange rate and he wondered, could underground coins be converted into other currencies? Has technology already advanced that much? He transferred the money into yuan and the system reported that the transfer was successful. Let him check his account. Yao Bin received a notification on his phone and checked the balance, thinking it was true. He smiled and thought that if he caught more ghosts and quickly sent them to the underworld, he could save up a lot of money so his mom wouldn't have to go to work. 
he looked at the replenishment message again, and after that he bought the notebook of life and death. Through this, he learned that Mo Xiao was currently 16 years old, an element of wealth. She was born at the hour of the ox, July 28, 22. She must die at the hour of the rat, September 20, 2018. He thought that today was the day Mo Xiao would die. How fortunate that he now has a notebook. Records of her death began to disappear, and the system reported that Mo Xiao was too far away. It was impossible to change the fate of this person. He got worried and thought this was bad. He needed to act faster. He hopes that she will wait for him. He ran to her, leaving the notebook on the road, and after a while ran to her house. Yao Bin looked at the time and thought it was good that he had some time. Suddenly a man's voice was heard from behind the door. He said that life is either torn, if he wants to overpower her soul into the underground path, that is, there is one path. Yao Bin thought, do they want to overpower the soul? Mo Shi Yao was lying in the middle of the room and four sorcerers were sitting around her, and one of them told her grandfather that if he was still hesitating, then he was afraid that she would not be able to walk her way in the hour of the rat. The old man exclaimed that this was his granddaughter. How could he let this thing take over her? A man who looked like Mo Shi Yao addressed the old man as his father and said that even if this perfume was dirty, he would do anything so that her mother could see their daughter day after day. The old man sighed and told the sorcerers that they could begin. Yao Bin rushed inside and exclaimed, who told them that this was the only way to save her. The guards grabbed him and told him to get out of here, but Yao Bin said that he could use a spell that would take away half of his life in the underworld in order to save her. The old man thought about it and Mo Shi Yao's father asked why they still haven't taken him out of here. He interferes. The old man raised his hand and asked, did he just say that he could save Mo Shi Yao? One of the sorcerers smoothed his beard and asked if he could ask who he was and the heir of which sorcerer he was. Yao Bin replied that he did not belong to any section, he was just passing by. Their outdated method irritated him so much that he decided to go in and tell them about it. The sorcerer got angry and Yao Bin asked him to calm down. Can he ask a couple of questions? He just wants them to know why their methods are stupid. The sorcerer agreed and Yao Bin asked how much time and how many sorcerers would they need to make it work. The sorcerer replied that they needed eight people and one hour to cast the spell, then she would be safe. Yao Bin grinned and said that his method only needed him in a couple of minutes of time. The sorcerer Kain got angry and Mo Shi Yao's father asked him not to be angry, he is just a child. Let him hurry up and explain. The sorcerer exclaimed, if his method was so stupid, what would he do to save her? Yao Bin replied that he would have distorted fate. Grandfather Mo Shi Yao asked how a young guy like him could change fate. The sorcerer smiled and said that he had been practicing magic for more than 10 years, but had never heard of anyone who could do such a thing. They can't let this boy fool him. Yao Bin took a step forward and said that if so, then now is the time for them to open their eyes. Fortunately, there is still time. He raised his hand to Mo Shi Yao's face and thought that she would live. After that, he stood up and said that was all. One of the sorcerers said that he had just seen him close his eyes for a very short time. He did only this, and now her fate has changed. He is not only a fraud, but also heartless. The sorcerer asked, is that all? Why is she still unconscious then? Yao Bin began to count and Mo Shi Yao's grandfather became worried. Yao Bin counted to two and the sorcerer said that actually they could have saved her from the very beginning, but he only wasted time. If everything turns out to be a failure, he must be ready to give his life to her. Yao Bin counted to three and everyone looked at Mo Shi Yao. The sorcerer fell silent and began to wait, and Mo Shi Yao's father sighed and asked the guards why they were standing still. Let them throw this guy out immediately. He turned to Master Kayan and said that he should continue his work. The young sorcerer called out to the master and told him to look. Mo Shi Yao slowly opened her eyes, then sat up and asked, What's going on here? Her grandfather extended his hand to her and replied that nothing was happening. It's good that she woke up. Finally, he, Mo Cheng Zong, will not observe the scenario, the young die, but the old remain. Mo Shi Yao hugged her mother and asked her grandfather, did she almost die? Her father said that she woke up thanks to Master Kayan. He is very grateful to him for his hard work. Master Kayan thanked him and said that it was necessary. Mo Shi Yao called out to her grandfather and said that it was not he who saved her. She pointed to Yao Ben and said it was him. Yao Bin tried to escape from the guard's hands, and Mo Shi Yao said that he promised to save her. Yao Bin turned to Master Kayan and asked if he would tell him what was in his jar. He is very interested. 
The young sorcerer holding the jar was scared, and Mo Shi Yao's father told him to mind his own business. In advance for his efforts tonight, you will not shame him. Let him get out of here now. Master Kayan bowed to him and said that they were already leaving. Yao Bin thought that undoubtedly Mo Shi Yao's father wanted her dead, that crying demon inside the jar was specially prepared for her. Time passed, Yao Bin came to school and saw two girls chatting about something. He walked past them and thought, what are they going to do? He put his hand on the shoulder of a guy passing by and asked what everyone was doing. The guy replied that there was such a beauty there, there were no such people at their school. Yao Bin thought for a moment, and then entered the classroom and thought that Zio Bei was not here. He wonders if she's okay. His classmates stood behind him and discussed the new student. The guy said that he didn't expect her to transfer to their class. His friend said that she would come now. Yao Bin opened the textbook and the door to the classroom swung open and Mo Shi Yao appeared in the aisle. Yao Bin looked up at her and thought, why is she here? Another guy called out to her and asked why she was there. Mo Shi Yao walked past him and he was upset, after which he caught up with her and said that his name was Liu Zai Gang, the last time their family had dinner together. Mo Shi Yao sighed and asked, so what? He replied that he hoped to make friends with her, especially since they study in the same class. They will see each other often. Mo Shi Yao puffed out her cheeks displeasedly and said that even if he doesn't come near her, she is here for Yao Bin. She grabbed Yao Bin's hand and said with a wide smile that they had recently met. He was a little surprised and asked why she was here. She didn't listen to him and put a note in his hand, offering to meet at this place that evening. Yao Bin read the note and agreed with it. She smiled and said that was wonderful. Other guys watched their conversation and one of them said that they were so embarrassed. Why did Liu Zigang not please her? She ignored him right at the entrance and decided to meet Yao Bin, lucky idiot. Evening came, Yao Bin came to the place indicated in the note and saw a huge rich building in front of him. He went inside and saw Liu Zigang inside, hugging the girls and saying that Mo Shi Yao had invited him too, so they would all go in together. One of the girls said that she couldn't believe her eyes. Did he just come here by bus? The other girl waved her hand and asked how could such a young lady invite a country boy. She is afraid he will do something questionable. Yao Bin thought that she would not have called Liu Zai Gang, but they needed to see what kind of commotion he would cause. They entered the room together and Liu Zai Gang told them to look. Yao Bin was here. The girl asked who it is. He looks like a poor man. If they add up everything he's wearing, she doesn't think his clothes are worth more than a hundred yuan. Her friend asked why they allow such a person to be here. Let them call security to throw him out. Yao Bin thought that as he expected, no one here has good intentions. Suddenly Yao Bin ran into some guy with dreadlocks and he looked at him, asking who is this. Guo Shui hugged him and said that a good dog should not stand in his way. Yao Bin dissatisfiedly shook the dust off his shoulder and a system window appeared in front of him. A fourth level mission has appeared, he needs to pacify the Demon King. The Demon King is the king of the territory. His familiars are ordinary and crying demons, difficulty level 5. Yao Bin thought, why does this mission look different from the others? The guy with dreadlocks said that he just bumped into a girl in front of the toilet. She is very hot, and what a face she has, what shape she has, she also dressed provocatively. He came out of the restroom, and she suddenly hugged him. Other guys asked, is she so horny? He's a lucky guy. Another guy asked, is she still there? He wants some cuddles too. Yao Bin thought they were idiots. He can't believe their social life is so terrible. He used his yin yang eye powers and opened his eyes wider. A woman in a red dress suddenly entered the room and told a man named Wang Chio that it was that brat who had disturbed her. Wang Chio asked the guy with dreadlocks how dare he harass a woman. Yao Bin took a closer look at her and thought that this woman was unusual. Wang Chio did not wait for an answer and hit the guy. Liu Zai Gang adjusted his glasses and asked what happened. He wants to beat up his friend. Wang Chio called him young master and asked if he was here too. So this is his friend. Liu Zai Gang said that this was all just a misunderstanding. Let him take care of it and ignore it. Wang Chio replied that if he was his friend, then of course he would turn a blind eye to all this. Let them continue to have fun. He will not bother them. The guy with the dreadlocks said it scared him. Why doesn't he kneel down and apologize to him? Wang Chio exclaimed that this was too much. The guy lifted his face by the chin and asked, too much. Apparently he won't kneel. Did he understand correctly? Then he will show him what too much is. Suddenly someone asked what he was saying. He too would like to see what too much really is. 
Yao Bin heard this and thought that there was an expert here. A blonde man came out to them, accompanied by his guards, and Wang Chio called him Mr. Kai, saying that this little idiot crossed the line, he pestered his people, even commanded him. Mr. Kai smiled and said that they would give him a chance. Let him turn around. A guy came up to him and told him to watch how she dresses. It's her fault that his friend molested her. Didn't she appear right before his eyes? He raised his hand and asked who he thought he was. Does he even know who they are? Suddenly the guard stepped forward and kicked him in the stomach. Blood gushed from the guy's mouth and he was thrown back. The rest of the guys were scared and Liu Zai Gang thought, where did this cruel idiot Kai come from? Kai lit a cigarette and asked Wang Chio what he thought. How can he resolve the situation? Wang Chio replied that since he touched his people, they could cut off his hands. The guards immediately grabbed the guy with dreadlocks and pinned him to the floor. The frightened guy called Mr. Kai and said that he would not dare to do this again. He would never do this again. Let him let him go. He called out to Liu Zai Gang and said that he should hurry up and help him. Liu Zai Gang opened his mouth in fear and thought, what if this idiot gets angry and switches on him? It's better for him to do nothing. The guy shouted that he was a coward. Why doesn't he say anything? At the same moment, the guard waved his sword and the guys closed their eyes, expecting a bloody spectacle. Suddenly, Yao Bin grabbed the guard's hand and said that Hu Ming had enough. Can he forgive him? Mr. Kai smiled and asked his subordinate Bu Kai, how about teaching this brave man a lesson? Bu Kai agreed and then hit Yao Bin, but he grabbed his hand and threw it away. Bu Kai hit the wall and Mr. Kai said it was interesting. After that, he called out to Ertu and Hua Kai and told the two of them to go. Two guards immediately attacked Yao Bin, but he scattered them to the sides and said that this was enough. Kai praised him and said that he had skills, but he would not allow a high school student to compete with him. Yao Bin's phone rang, he answered the call and heard the woman. She said that he should give the phone to Zhao Kai. Xiao Kai took the phone and asked Yao Bin why Miss Guxi was calling him. Yao Bin replied that he had no idea. Xiao Kai asked, have they met before? Yao Bin replied that they had not met. So will he pick up the phone? Xiao Kai put the phone to his ear and said that he was listening. Miss Guxi asked, what kind of obnoxious man is he? How dare he touch the young lady's guest? Xiao Kai looked up at Yao Bin and asked, is he the young lady's guest? No one told him about this. Miss Guxi asked if she needed to get his permission before inviting anyone to her home. Xiao Kai replied that, of course, this is not true. If he is her guest, he will personally take him to the VIP room. Don't let her worry about it. He handed the phone to Yao Bin and apologized for the inconvenience. Let him allow him to escort him to the VIP room to meet the young lady. Yao Bin followed him with a smile and they went to the VIP room. Grandfather Mo Shi Yao was sitting there and Miss Guxi was standing next to him. Mo Chang Zhang thought that he was calm and calm. What a great choice. He asked, did he wonder why he was looking for him? Yao Bin replied that he knew there should be no reason for this. Mo Chang Zhang smiled and said that he liked his way of thinking. Miss Guxi said that the young lady's birthday is just around the corner. They would be happy to see him there. Yao Bin replied that he would definitely come. Mo Chang Zhang smiled and said that this is wonderful. That's all he wanted to say. He will leave some space for them, the kids. After that, Yao Bin came out and was greeted by the surprised looks of Liu Zai Gang and Wang Chio. Yao Bin saw a woman next to them and told them to wait. He pointed his finger at her and said that she should take off her clothes. Wang Chio covered it with his hand and asked what he was talking about. Hu Ming called out to Yao Bin and said that he was such an idiot. Liu Zai Gang also shouted that he was acting as if he had never seen women before. Yao Bin said that he would have to repeat it, let her take off her clothes. The woman smiled, revealing her fangs, and began to tear off her dress. Hu Ming said that she was so shameless. Just a minute ago, she was pretending to be naive and wanted to see him, and now she is undressing right in front of everyone. What's going on here anyway? She approached him and asked if he wanted her. Wang Chio asked the guards what they were looking at. Let them take her away from him. The guards began to act, but the woman grabbed Hu Ming and threw her to the floor. Another guy fell down and said in fear that it was a ghost. Liu Zai Gang said that she must be under some kind of spell. This is probably some kind of trick by Yao Bin. Another guy agreed with him and said that when Guo Shuai had a fight with Yao Bin, he forced him to take off his pants in front of everyone. The whole school can attest to this. He is sure that this is the work of Yao Bin. Wang Chio fell to his knees and told Yao Bin that he was an idiot. He didn't quarrel with him. Let him be merciful to Lily. 
Yao Bin replied that he did not force her to behave like that. If he wants to save her, then let her answer his question. Has she dated anyone suspicious recently? Wang Chio asked, Is anyone suspicious? He needs to think. The other day she met her adopted sister at karaoke. Could they consider her suspicious? Yao Bin asked, Adopted sister. Is her name Zhang Xiaobei? Wang Chio confirmed his words and said that this is accurate. Is there a connection between this? Yao Bin thought that the crying demon had taken possession of Lily's body, and the royal demon had possessed the body of her adopted sister. Why is this happening? Wang Chio grabbed him by the clothes and said that now he must save Lily. Yao Bin took out his sword and surrounded himself with talismans, then he touched the sword to Lily's head and she froze in place. Taking advantage of the moment, Yao Bin abruptly pulled Huming aside and told the demon that he did not care which of the royal demons it was, he would drive it out of her. He placed the talisman on her back and she screamed, after which she rushed at Yao Bin and left a couple of nail cuts on his cheek. Immediately afterwards, she attacked him again and Wang Chio told Yao Bin to be careful. Yao Bin quickly hit her on the head and she fell to the floor unconscious and dark energy began to come out of her. Yao Bin grabbed the dark energy, then crushed it and the system congratulated him for successfully subduing the Demon King. Ten small ghosts and simple ones remained under the king's control. He received 1,000,000 yuan of the underworld and he also managed to build his own palace, the front courtyard of the Ming Palace. Yao Bin wiped away the blood and thought that he had finally completed this mission. Wang Chio lifted Lily and asked what was wrong with her now. Yao Bin threw his shirt over her and told him not to worry. She was fine now. Don't let him worry. Wang Chio said that he appreciates what he did for her. In the future, if he needs his help, he will always be there. They left and Zhao Kai told Yao Bin that he should call him whenever he was in trouble. Yao Bin smiled and replied that he did not need thanks. In fact, he really needs his help. He wants him to find the girl that Director Wang just mentioned, Zhang Xiaobei. She works here. Zhao Kai said that let him wait in the room, he will send someone to find her. Yao Bin agreed, and after that, Zhao Kai walked towards Mo Chang Zong. The old man asked, how is he? Zhao Kai replied that he is not greedy, brave, and smart. It will be useful in the future. Mo Chang Zong nodded and said that Yao Bin will become an outstanding man, he should take him under his wing. Zhao Kai bowed and replied that he would protect him until his last breath. Time has passed. Zhao Kai asked Yao Bin what kind of relationship he and Zhang Xiaobei had. Yao Bin replied that she was his ex-girlfriend. Is there something wrong? Zhao Kai said that Jin Zai's maid said that she committed suicide. His subordinate placed the laptop on the table in front of him and Yao Bin exclaimed, Did she commit suicide? This is impossible. Zhao Kai asked him to wait and said that he needed to finish. She was found at 7 p.m. in the VIP room. She was not breathing then. Yao Bin asked where is her body. Xiao Kai said that this is what he wanted to say. He showed him the surveillance camera footage and said that her body had disappeared and she had left the room herself. After that, she got into the car and Yao Bin asked, Can he find this car? Xiao Kai replied that it would be difficult to track, so they were going to hide it from the very beginning. But don't let him worry. He will do everything in his power. Time passed. Yao Bin was sitting at school in class, looking out the window. He thought that Guo Shuai hadn't shown up for class since that day, but everything must be fine since he hadn't heard anything about him from that demon girl. A system notification appeared in front of Yao Bin. Does he want to renew his possessions? Yao Bin agreed and the system congratulated him on the successful renovation of the guest house. He sighed and thought that he needed to find Zio Bei's body before cleaning up this mess. Suddenly Bu Kai called him and said that he should go home, his mother is in trouble. Yao Bin asked what happened. After a while, he ran to his mother and saw that she was standing next to the guys with batons and a bloody rag was pressed to her head. Yao Bin called out to her and some guy hit him on the head from behind. Yao Bin fell to the ground and his mother, helping him up, said that he should run and find the police, they couldn't handle him. Yao Bin frowned and told her not to worry, he would protect their home. The system reported that the system was rebooting. A whole crowd of men with different tools as weapons ran up to them, and Yao Bin's mother told her son to be careful. She covered him with her body, and Yao Bin used her strength, disarming the men and inflicting wounds on them. They got scared and asked what kind of magicians these were. The system reported that he had received several fear points, and Yao Bin picked up the wrench that the man had dropped from the ground and said that they should call their boss. 
After that, Yao Bin and his mother returned home, and he treated her wounds. He said that if she just stays at home, he will take care of everything. She grabbed his hand and said that he should be careful. He smiled and told her not to worry, he would be back soon. He left the apartment and thought that he didn't care who they were. If he doesn't touch his family, then they're finished. He went down to the park in front of the house, and a man in a business suit told Director how that he was there. Director who looked at Yao Bin and asked, He is Yao Bin, right? Yao Bin confirmed his words and asked, Who is he? Director who replied that his name was Hu Wang Kai. He was the father of Hu Ming Hao. Yao Bin asked, His subordinates beat his mother, right? The man said that Director Hao bought their area, they need to move out. This is the rule, they don't mock. He pointed to the injured guys and said that he should be happy that they didn't file a lawsuit for not leaving. How dare he touch their subordinates? They should have taken him to the police. After that, two men grabbed Yao Bin from behind and he cursed. Director who asked, does he want to fight back? Even if he can escape, his mother cannot. He's right, isn't he? Miss Guxi appeared out of nowhere and said she was impressed. Director who became worried and asked what she was doing here. He thought that Hu Ming Hao said that the Mo family hated Yao Bin, right? Then what is Miss Guxi doing here? Miss Guxi twirled a lock of hair on her hand with a smile and asked, Did he seriously bully this child? Director who called her Guxi and asked what she meant. They have to demolish the buildings, but he and his mother don't want to move out, no matter what. They are simply afraid that something bad might happen. He thought that all his people had suffered, and he was still here safe and sound. Why is she helping him? Guxi asked, since he wants to demolish the buildings, then how is he going to compensate the residents for the damage? He replied that everyone who lives here suffers from lack of money. Of course, their Hong Giant Corporation will take good care of it. Occupied rooms will be charged 10,000 yuan above the average market price. Empty rooms will be paid at the highest market value. What does she think about this? She laughed and said he was so generous. If everything is ready, then the building must be demolished. Let them begin. Director who became worried, and then an excavator arrived at the site, and he was very scared. Yao Bin asked why he looked so unhappy. Guxi replied that the authorities wanted to make this place a heavy industry zone. This old man must have felt something, so he tried to lower the price to buy this building and then build more projects. If so, he'll make a ton of money after the demolition. She looked at Yao Bin with a smile and said that she would not let him do this. Director who called out to her and said that it was just an errand, there was no need to worry about it. Guxi waved her hand sharply and asked why he was still blocking the way. Does he think they don't have enough people? The man called out to the director and they saw tanks around and military men with weapons came out of the bushes. Director who immediately fell to his knees and said that they could agree. What is she doing? The military man smiled and said that it was nothing. It was just a small military exercise. Guxi looked at the military man with a smile, and Yao Bin told the director that they were ordinary people. How can they accept this? He wants to ask, does he still want to demolish this area today? A gun was pointed at Director Hao, and he raised his hands as his eyes began to turn bloodshot with rage. He stood up and told Guxi that he was counting on her this time. She smiled and said that if he agreed, then they would start now. After that, the tow truck began to break down buildings and director who pursed his lips, thinking about his money. After the demolition, Guxi said that everything was ready, they could leave. Director who pointed to the apartment building and asked, will she destroy it? She put her hands on Yao Bin's shoulders and said that he still doesn't agree to sell his house. Of course they can't tear it down. As for the other apartments, Mr. Mo bought them all. The money has already been transferred to his corporation account. She looked at Yao Bin and said that his house is the last one in the area. He can earn a lot of money as compensation. Yao Bin thanked her and said that she should convey his gratitude to Mr. Mo too. Director who said that everything was ready. The rest had already been settled. It was time for him to leave too. Yao Bin stopped him and said that they had injured his mother. How are they going to answer for this? The director got angry and Guxi gave him a dissatisfied look. Director who backed away and said that he would take her to the hospital immediately. Yao Bin grabbed him by the clothes and said that he should ask for forgiveness. He wants him to apologize to her. The military pointed guns at Director Hu and he bowed to Yao Bin, saying that it was all his fault, he was a fool and caused them so much trouble. He's sorry, let him spare him. Yao Bin's mother came out of the house and asked her son what happened. Yao Bin approached her and said with a smile that all the problems had been solved. He also said that he would protect her from their home. She cried and said that he had grown so much. 
time passed, they arrived at the hospital, and Yao Bin told Zhao Kai that his mother's condition was getting better. He was grateful to him. Zhao Kai said that his people were useless. They could not protect his mother. Yao Bin shook his head and said that if he had not sent his men to protect her, she would have suffered a lot more. Zhao Kai touched his shoulder and said that he thought that was enough. Let him come back and sit with his mother. Yao Bin agreed, and after that he came to her room and noticed flowers in a vase. He covered his mother with a blanket and asked who gave her these flowers. She smiled and asked who it could be. This is Zayo Bei. She is a really good girl, but today she looked strange. Yao Bin exclaimed, Zayo Bei, when did she come? His mother was surprised and asked what happened. She pointed to the door and said that after he saw the man out, she came in and just came out. Yao Bin ran out of the room and his mother asked what happened. Where does he go? Yao Bin ran out into the corridor and saw Zayo Bei running away. He ran after her and thought that she was dead. How could she move? And finally, who is behind all this and pulling the strings? Oh well, he needs to follow her first. By nightfall, he reached the abandoned temple and noticed traces leading inside. He opened the doors, went inside and looked around, thinking, is she here? At the same moment, a system window appeared in front of him about a new mission of the 8th level. He needs to pacify King Qin Guang. King Qin Guang is one of the ten kings of hell. He rules life and death, heaven and earth, the fortune and misfortune of the underworld, and the longevity of good people. The difficulty level is extremely high. Suddenly, the door slammed behind Yao Bin, and he turned around sharply. He looked around and realized that the temperature in the palace was dropping. He raised the Qin Ming lantern to the ceiling and illuminated everything around. The statues of the woman moved, and suddenly someone grabbed Yao Bin by the leg. Yao Bin saw that several bone arms engulfed his legs, and the female statues attacked him from behind. He used his power, pushing all the evil spirits away from him, and a roar was heard. The skeleton's hands stopped moving, and Yao Bin walked away towards the king's statue, seeing that other skeletons were approaching him. He turned around and saw that the statue of the king was looking straight at him, and thought that this was power. He grabbed the temple pillar and shouted that this was the power of the ghost king. He lifted the column with a scream, and then threw it at the skeletons and the roof of the temple began to collapse. The skeletons retreated back, and Yao Bin looked at the statue, shouting that surely only a king of the first palace like him could conspire with evil to capture him. If he does not appear, he will completely destroy one column of the palace every second. If he doesn't appear after two seconds, he will destroy his entire palace. He grabbed the pillar again, and then threw it, and said that if he surrenders today, he will spare him, Otherwise, his sacred statue will be destroyed, just like this pillar. Sorcerer Zhang asked Master Kayan, is he sure that he can help them? Master Kayan put out his cigarette and told him not to doubt it. He promised him ten virgins and a statue of gold. How can he refuse such a lucrative deal? At that same moment, an explosion occurred in the temple and Master Kayan said that, in addition, he had a backup plan. There is a time bomb right in the palace. Time is running out, they will watch this boy disappear. Sorcerer Zhang was delighted and said that he was so attentive, he did a good job. Master Kayan laughed, and at that same second Yao Bin touched them and said that they were indeed very attentive. Master Kayan was afraid and said that this could not be. Yao Bin asked, he wants to ask why a person who should already be dead is sitting in his car. Sorcerer Zhang asked how is this possible? How could King Qin Guang spare him? Yao Bin pointed his finger forward and said that of course he didn't do it, he just obeyed him. The sorcerers jumped out of the car and Master Kayan told Yao Bin not to think that he could defeat him. He still had something. Yao Bin slowly got out of the car and at that same second the skeleton pierced Master Kayan's chest. Master Kayan's body fell to the ground and Wizard Zhang bowed to Yao Bin, asking him to spare him. Statues of women rushed into the sky and they began to circle around Yao Bin and behind him an army of skeletons appeared with King Qin Guang. Yao Bin told the sorcerer to tell him where Zhang Zayo Bei was. He replied that she brought him here and left. Yao Bin asked where. The sorcerer waved his hands and replied that he really didn't know. His brother found her. He is behind all this. Yao Bin asked. Then he knows why she killed herself. Wizard Zhang asked in fear. Did she kill herself? How is this possible? She is dead? Yao Bin shouted. What does he know about her? Let him speak. The skeletons grabbed the sorcerer, and he replied that he was not sure. He accidentally overheard Guo Shui and his friends saying that she should die. He doesn't know the rest. 
He looked at the skeletons and asked them not to kill him. He knows something else. Yao Bin ordered the skeletons to let him go, and the sorcerer said that they had an appointment in a few days. Perhaps they would talk about Zhang Zayo Bei. If he let him go, he would find more information about it for him. Yao Bin agreed and said that he would then temporarily leave him alive and look at his behavior later. The sorcerer ran away and shouted that he would find out everything. Yao Bin thought that things were getting more complicated. Time passed. Yao Bin sat in the hospital and slept. The nurse woke him up and asked why he was sleeping here. He might catch a cold, so let him go back to bed. He took out his phone and thought that his mother had been in the restroom for 30 minutes. Why hasn't she returned yet? He caught up with the nurse and asked if she could check if his mother was in the toilet. She had been there for a long time and he would be embarrassed if he entered. The nurse smiled and said that he was so attentive, let him wait here, she will check everything. The nurse came out of the restroom and he asked, so what? She is alright? The nurse replied that she was not there. Yao Bin received a message on his phone and decided to check what was there. The nurse looked at his phone and was horrified when she saw a photo of Yao Bin's mother standing near Zayo Bei and smiling at her. Yao Bin thought, is his mother with her? The nurse touched Yao Bin's shoulder and he asked, what is it? She pointed to the turquoise bracelets that were on their hands and said that these bracelets were from the morgue. Yao Bin decided to call the number from which the message came, but no one answered and he thought that this was expected. A notification came to his phone again and he saw a message that the game had started. A message arrived with the first rule. No one should know that his mother was missing. After that, Yao Bin began to collect his mother's things and the doctor said that he wanted to talk about the woman who disappeared from the hospital. They'll take responsibility for finding her, but he'd better call the police first. Yao Bin replied that this was not necessary. The girl in the photo was his sister. She had urgent business, so she took his mother without telling him anything. He looked at the doctor and asked if he could bring the documents for her discharge. Second rule. He needs to ask for a month off from school. After this message, Yao Bin went to school. The teacher exclaimed, long pass. Did he forget what he did? He dissatisfiedly approached Yao Bin and said that if it weren't for him, Guo Shuai would not have disappeared. Yao Bin asked in surprise, is he missing? The teacher slapped him in the face and told him to say what he was up to. Yao Bin wiped away the blood and said that he would like to take a break. The teacher got even angrier and waved, saying that he was a shameless child. Yao Bin grabbed his hand and said that he would like to take a break. After that, he managed to take a vacation and a third message arrived, in which it was written that he needed to go to the western part of the city, let him organize a pogrom in Huangjia. In the evening, Yao Bin came to the indicated place and went inside, and then broke a vase and someone asked what happened. It looks like someone is trashing everything around here. Yao Bin smashed something again and Zhao Kai approached him, saying that this was his territory. Was there some kind of misunderstanding here? Yao Bin did not answer and looked at the flower pot and then grabbed it and Zhao Kai said that because of Mr. Mo's attitude towards him, he respects him. However, this does not mean that he is afraid of him. Yao Bin broke the flower pot and said that he was deliberately destroying his palace. Zhao Kai remained silent and then raised his hand and said that if so, then let him not blame him. He hit him in the chest and blood flowed from his mouth. Yao Bin caught his breath and Zhao Kai said that he is here, let him try to hit him back. Yao Bin wiped away the blood and replied that he would not, because their strengths were not comparable. After that, a message from an unknown number came to his phone again. Tomorrow at 8 o'clock in the evening, he needs to report to the Lei Chuan estate. Yao Bin caught his breath and then walked towards the exit and Bu Kai told Mr. Kai that he came here and destroyed his palace. Would he really let him go? Zhao Kai took out a cigar and replied that he had already said everything. Does he need to repeat? Let him order two people to pursue him, and then let him announce their gathering to the brothers from other branches. Bu Kai obeyed him and got down to business. The next evening, Yao Bin came to the indicated place and saw a bunch of smartly dressed people approaching the gate. Suddenly, the sorcerer Zhang grabbed his hand, and Yao Bin asked in surprise Zhang Tianxi. The sorcerer Zhang said that he was not allowed to enter this estate. Yao Bin asked, what's wrong? He replied that it was a known black market. The people who come here are the elite of all industries. Things like hunger games or mercenaries are commonplace here. Once they cross the threshold, they enter the devil's territory. In addition, he heard that today, the anonymous owner of the estate was opening an auction. All the elite of Jianzhong and Pan Hai will be here. Looks like there's going to be a massacre here. 
Yao Bin asked who is the owner, and what will they put up for auction? Wizard Zhang replied that he had no idea. But since he ordered an investigation into the Zhang Zio Bay case, all the clues he found led precisely to this estate. He is afraid that today's auction will have something to do with her. Yao Bin turned away and said that he understood. Then he must go there, they must pay for everything. The sorcerer asked him to stop, but Yao Bin did not listen and went inside. He was stopped by security guards and asked if security guards do not monitor security at the entrance. One of the guards said that he must have at least 5,000,000 in cash or valuable collateral before he could leave. Another guard asked, does a poor schoolboy like him want to take part in the auction? It's just funny. Yao Bin remained silent and suddenly Mo Xiao called out to him. She smiled and asked why he was here. He replied that he had business here. She hugged his arm and said that sitting at home was boring, and she heard that the local auction was amazing, so she snuck out here. She told the guards that he had business. Which of the two was so stupid as to stop him? The guards let them through and greeted young Lady Mo and young Master Yao. Yao Bin thanked her for her help and said that after all, she could not go further with him. She asked displeasedly, then why did he thank her if he didn't want to go further together? Yao Bin patted her on the head and said that together they would make a lot of noise. He was worried that it would cause a lot of problems. She sheepishly replied that then she would wait, he would have to find her. After that, Yao Bin entered the huge hall where the trading was in full swing. He looked at the scene below and thought, is this what an auction looks like? He took a seat on one of the rows and looked up, thinking that the buyers on this balcony were quiet, apparently not interested in the usual lots. Probably their goal is the special lot that Zhang Tian she spoke about. The auction host said that the last lot, which everyone was waiting for, was being put up next. This lot is unique. It is not on stage or in boxes. It is among them. Auction participants asked, what is this? Is this a person? Yao Bin thought that the last lot was probably Zio Bei and his mother. The spotlights came on, and the presenter said that lot 109 was Yao Bin. The spotlight illuminated him, and he was very surprised. The auction host said that Yao Bin is an 18-year-old guy, he is a 10th grade student at Pan High, and his specialty is changing destinies. Someone asked how it is. How can a schoolboy do this? Someone else said that this was Lei Chuan's estate, their items were never fake. Yao Bin thought that he was too careless, his mother was just a bait, their real target was him. One of the guests on the balcony raised his hand and named the price at 300,000 naizen. The rest of the people began to bargain for him, and Yao Bin thought that the person behind all this wanted him to ask for a day off from school and then deliberately made him disturb Mr. Kai. The auction participants began to argue. Someone shouted, does he want to raise the price to deal with him? The man replied that he was simply participating in the auction. Why does he say that? Yao Bin slowly stood up and thought that this was in order to eliminate him with the wrong hands, to quietly kill him in the estate, everything was planned. He began to go down to the stage, and one of the auction participants, swearing, asked what he meant. Another participant asked, is he already starting to swear? Meanwhile in Yao, Bin took the microphone and asked everyone to calm down, he had something to say. They don't have to spend that much money to buy it. He has only one condition, let them say who the auction organizer is. One of the auction participants stood up from his seat and said that this auction was completely anonymous. Did he say this to provoke everyone? Besides, they don't know whether he really can change fate or not. Therefore, on what is he based when making such demands? Yao Bin asked why don't they just try. He thought that they had even appointed someone to ruin his plan. Whoever is behind this is very passionate. The man stood up and said that in the Lei Chuan estate, life and death were already predetermined. Then, by everyone's request, he, Zhu Long, is obliged to check it. One of the auction participants said that Zhu Long is a mysterious master. He is afraid that the boy will die by his hand. It is rumored that he can destroy any cannon in just three movements. Zhu Long stood opposite Yao Bin and someone said that it was such a pity that he would die so young. Zhu Long punched and sent a white dragon at Yao Bin. Yao Bin got scared and decided to retreat and then summoned a dragon-headed centipede and ordered it to attack. An explosion occurred, the monster attacked Zhu Long and severely injured him so that blood sprayed from his mouth. The auction participants were very scared, and someone said that it was incredible. How could an experienced man like Zhu Long lose to a high school student? He can change his destiny, can't he? Yao Bin said that even though he tried to kill him, he would not retaliate. His technique was only used to destroy some of his fighting skills. 
The guards helped Zhu Long up, and Yao Bin said that he should get out of here. After that, he shouted that he would not take back his words. Only when they tell him who organized the auction will he give up. Let them listen to him carefully. The only condition is to disclose the name of the auction organizer. Suddenly, a creaking sound began to be heard from above. Yao Bin looked around and thought, What is that sound? Where does it come from? One of the guests told the others to look at the ceiling. There are two women hanging there. It was Zio Bei and Yao Bin's mother. The others immediately raised their heads and saw that there were bombs attached to them, and the timer showed that there was one minute left before the explosion. All the guests immediately ran to the exit and started shouting that there was a bomb. But suddenly the doors closed and someone exclaimed, Who locked the door? Are they trying to kill them? One of the participants said that they are trapped. This auction is a trap. Mo Shi Yao called out to Yao Bin and he looked back. She approached him and said that she saw that it was a trap, so she sent a man to find her grandfather. But she didn't expect that they were going to blow up the place. Yao Bin told her not to worry, he would protect her. He looked at his mother and Zio Bei hanging on the ceiling and said that let her trust him, he can do it. One of the auction participants turned to Yao Bin and said that if he has the opportunity to change his destiny, then let him save them. From now on he is the god of thunder of their Jang Feng sect, they will do whatever he asks. The other man agreed with his words and told Yao Bin that he still had the word of their high long sect. Yao Bin patted Mo Shi Yao on the head and told her to go to the door. He will help everyone get out of here. After that, Yao Bin changed something in the system and chose the power of King Kin Guang. Immediately after that, his body was filled with power and the floor cracked under his feet. He jumped up to the ceiling and grabbed the chains. Then he broke them and Zio Bei and his mother began to fall down. He quickly caught them and landed, and then removed the bombs from them and ran towards the door, telling the others to get out of there. He sped up, then swung his fist and hit the door, while the timer reached zero and an explosion occurred. The door opened with a bang and everyone started coughing from the smoke. Mo Shi Yao asked Yao Bin if he was okay. He replied that everything was fine as long as she was protected. Don't let her worry about him. A man with armed men entered the hall and asked, Who is Yao Bin here? No one answered, and he asked again, which one is Yao Bin? Yao Bin stood up and said that it was him. The man pointed a gun at him and said that since it was him, then let him come here. But Yao Bin did not move from his place, and the man said that he told him to come here. Is he deaf? Yao Bin looked at him and thought that they had a total of eight pistols. He thought it would be difficult for him to handle them. He won't let them hurt anyone. At that same second, Zhao Kai appeared along with his men and told the man that he had no guts. He bullies his brother while he's not around, doesn't he? The man was afraid of him and asked why he was here. He quickly let go of the gun and asked how dare he touch his brother. He got it all wrong. Zhao Kai hit him and asked, did he misunderstand? The man fell to the floor and cowered in pain, and Zhao Kai said that he could have killed him if he had come a minute later. Is this what he calls a misunderstanding? Yao Bin approached Mo Shi Yao and said that if they wanted to kill him, then they did not need to lock everyone here. He thought, did he want to use their boss's name to kill him? Then let them not blame him for repaying them in kind. One of the auction participants grabbed the man by the clothes and asked how he could put a gun to his head. Does he have a dying wish? A man from the Jang Feng sect raised his hand and told his subordinates to surround the area. They could not let anyone get out. Meanwhile, the guard ran to the boss and said that they were in trouble. They are doomed. Boss Hai has captured all their thugs. He said that if he didn't show up, he would kill one of them every minute. His boss was very surprised and wandered into the guest room, thinking that killing Yao Bin should have been a chance to adopt Bing Hai. But it seems to be backfiring. He better be a good boy. But why didn't the explosion kill everyone? He entered the room and the men said that he had finally arrived. The organizer apologized to Mr. Lai and Mr. Hai and said that he only intended to kill the boy Yao Bin, not their gang. He apologizes. Mr. Li gave him a displeased look and asked who he was going to kill. Xiao Kai called Hai Tian Kai over and he asked, did he want something? Xiao Kai grabbed him by the neck and said that Yao Bin was his brother. How could he touch him without his permission? He ordered his karaoke to be destroyed to ruin their relationship. Luckily, he's not an idiot like him. After that, others started beating Hai Tian Kai and he said that he was wrong. He will not touch him again. Boss Hei said they should beat the crap out of him. How could he grab them? Yao Bin called out to him and said that he needed to talk to him. Boss Hai ordered his men to stop and said that young master Yao Bin needed to talk to him. 
Yao Bin sat down next to Hai Tian Kai, and he asked, Is he Ying Hao's father? Hai Tian Kai confirmed his words and asked if he knew him. It's so lucky that they are friends. There was a misunderstanding, let him help him explain. Yao Bin said that his son threatened him, and he grabbed his mother. Any chance they are friends? Hai Tian Kai was scared, and Bu Kai told Yao Bin that he had something to tell him. Shang Zio Bei ran away. Yao Bin was surprised, and then looked at Hai Tian Kai and said that he would give him one last chance if he answered honestly, he would let him go. Hai Tian Kai said that he is ready to answer all questions. Yao Bin said that he wanted to know one thing. What did they do to Zhang Zio Bei? Hai Tian Kai looked up at him and said that he should not tell anyone what he was going to tell him now. Yao Bin agreed and Hai Tian Kai said that Zio Bei said that she needed a lot of money. They gave her what she asked for and then began experimenting on her body. Yao Bin asked what experiments. He replied that they were testing zombie powder on her. Everyone present in the room was very surprised and Yao Bin asked, Zombie powder? Zhao Kai asked, The power of zombies. Yao Bin said that they must have killed her to prevent their secrets from being revealed. Hai Tian Kai waved his hands and replied that this was not the case. They need her to continue their experiments. How could they kill her? Yao Bin looked at his face and thought, is he trying to say that she killed herself? Hai Tian Kai noticed that he had become silent and asked if he had no more questions for him, then could he leave? Yao Bin smiled and said that of course he could leave, he always keeps his word. He broke Hai Tian Kai's shoulder and he screamed in pain. Yao Bin said that however, he promised not to kill them. He didn't say he forgives him for kidnapping his mother. He's gone too far. He gave him a letter and said that he should take this letter to his boss. And let him not look there, he began to kill him. After this, the guards Hai Tian Kai and Yao Bin told them to get out of here. Xiao Kai walked up to him and asked if he believed what he said. Yao Bin replied that he does not believe everything. Everything is under control. He found a way to bankrupt his boss. Mr. Lai thanked Yao Bin and said that if not for his help, they would have been buried in this estate. Boss Hai agreed and said that he had never praised others like Uncle Lai, but he could come to him whenever he wanted. He will welcome him with open arms. Mo Xiao wiped her tears and said that it's good that they are all safe. Yao Bin wiped her tears and told her not to cry. She is beautiful when she smiles. After that, Guxi took Mo Xiao away and said that she couldn't believe they dared to do this. It's good that he was there. It's hard for her to imagine what could have happened to the young lady if they were late. Mo Xiao said that she was sorry, it was her fault, she should not have run away from home. Guxi asked, does she understand that she is wrong? They better go inside, and she will tell Grandpa Mo everything, so she won't escape punishment. Mo Xiao said that it was her mistake, let her not say anything to her grandfather. Guxi looked at Yao Bin and asked what about him. What is he going to do next? He replied that he had made several manipulations with the letter he had given. Maybe they'll soon find out who's boss. He won't leave him alone so easily. Guxi nodded and said that this is a clear vision of love and hate. He is a good guy. She took Mo Shi Yao to the car and said that she needed to take the young lady home, and Kai would take him and his mother to the hospital. They will meet again at their birthday party. Mo Shi Yao said that he should remember he must come. Yao Bin agreed, and after that time passed. He was walking along a mountain road and thought that the view from the village was so cool he was admiring all the beauty of the ocean with his own eyes. His friends drove past him, and Hu Ming told the others to take a look. Who is this? He decided to climb the mountain. Does he train health? Yao Bin did not answer, and Hu Ming said that he should not think that if he is under the wing of Zhao Kai, then he can do whatever he wants. Let him wait until Wai Kai returns, he will teach him good manners. They drove on, and he thought that the last time he asked his father to help him, he scolded him. He has no idea what that idiot Yao Bin did. But he doesn't care why Kai will come to the party today, and this idiot will die. They left, and Yao Bin thought that he was worried because this horde kept scurrying around. The system announced a new mission of the fifth level. He needs to find a beautiful female soul. The appearance of a fifth level soul is the same as a human soul. It camouflages itself in the company of people and is difficult to identify. Yao Bin thought that everyone who comes here is very rich. It seems that the status of the female soul is not low at all. But what does camouflage mean among people? Life in human society. Evening came, all the guests gathered for the birthday party, and Yao Bin was among them. He took a glass from the table and said that there are so many people here. He has no idea where this female soul could be hiding. 
Suddenly, someone shouted that Y. Kai was here. Y. Kai walked past the guests, and some girl asked, Is it really Y. Kai? Let them look at her. How does she look? Suddenly, another girl said that she had better stay. Y. Kai likes Mo Shi Yao. Another girl said that Y. Kai is so young and already so rich. No one can say for sure what his condition is. Yao Ben looked at Y. Kai and thought that he walked like a tiger. His movements were very powerful. He had the aura of a general. Suddenly someone pushed Yao Bin in the back, and he could not stand on his feet, pouring alcohol on Y Kai's shirt. Yao Bin also began to apologize, and Y Kai said that everything was fine, he just needed to change his shirt. Suddenly Hu Ming shouted from the crowd, when he ruins someone's shirt, shouldn't he compensate for the loss? Let them look at his cheap clothes. How can he pay for this expensive shirt? Maybe he came here to do obscene things towards the young lady? Someone from the crowd agreed, and Y. Kai looked threateningly at Yao Bin, asking him to tell him who he was. Let him show him his invitation. Yao Bin replied that Mo Shi Yao invited him, so he did not have an invitation letter. Y. Kai asked, did he just call her by her name? Who is he? Yao Bin said his name, and Y. Kai asked what kind of relationship he had with Mo Shi Yao. Yao Bin replied that they were friends. Y. Kai asked again, where is his invitation? Yao Bin replied that he said that he did not have an invitation. Y Kai straightened his sleeves and told the others to call the guards. There is an uninvited guest. Yao Bin asked, his name is Y Kai, right? He doesn't have an invitation, it's true, but Mo Shi Yao herself invited him here. Y Kai interrupted him and said that he had had enough of lies. He would explain himself later. He must take care of Mo Shi Yao's safety, so let him leave with the guards and deal with them. Suddenly, Mo Shi Yao's father came up to them and asked who called the guards. Y Kai greeted Mr. Mo and pointed to Yao Bin, saying that he was the one who called the security. That person was uninvited. Mr. Mo asked, is he talking about Yao Bin? He was invited by the venerable Mr. Mo and Mo Shi Yao. It is logical that he does not need an invitation. It's just a misunderstanding. Mo Shi Yao will cut the cake in a few minutes, so they shouldn't complicate the situation. He touched Yao Bin's back and invited him to go to the hall. Y Kai thought that despite his relationship with the Mo family, he still needed an invitation. Who is this Yao Bin? An orchestra began to play near the walls of the house, and Mr. Mo greeted all the guests at his daughter's birthday party. He declares this party officially open. Mo Xiao walked up to the cake, and Yao Bin thought that he hoped the soul would not appear now to disrupt Mo Xiao's birthday. Suddenly Y Kai turned around to look at him with anger, and a second later he turned away as if nothing had happened. Yao Bin did not pay attention to this, and the guests said that it was time to give gifts. He wonders who will be the winner this time. Someone gave a gift, and the guests said that this crystal doll shines so much. This is a great chance to stand out in front of your family. Expensive gifts are best. Y Kai walked up to Mo Shi Yao and presented her with a small box, and said that he wanted to give her an unusual gift. He hopes she will like it. He opened the box, and someone shouted that it was Bloody Amber. This is a completely different level. No gift can compare with this. Mo Shi Yao accepted the gift and thanked Y Kai with a smile. She really likes it. Y Kai smiled and said that he was glad to hear this. He thought she was so cute. Hu Ming shouted Yao Bin's name from the crowd again and asked what gift he had prepared for the young lady. They really want to see it. Y Kai looked around and thought he was wondering how he would surpass him. Mo Shi Yao began to look for Yao Bin and ask where he was. Yao Bin came out to them, and Hu Ming asked where his gift was. Mo Shi Yao handed Y Kai's gift to the servant and thought that they wanted to mock Yao Bin again. Y Kai stood in front of her and said that he didn't think anyone could come to a birthday party without a gift. But if this is true, then he has absolutely no manners. Yao Bin told Mo Shi Yao that he was in a hurry today, so he did not bring a gift. She replied that everything was fine, that he had already come as the best gift for her. Yao Bin smiled and said that although he did not have a gift, he still did not come empty-handed. He turned to Grandpa Mo and said that he loved Mo Shi Yao the most. If he is happy, then he thinks Mo Shi Yao will also be happy, so he prepared a gift for him. Wai Kai looked at him doubtfully and said that Grandpa Mo is powerful, he has absolutely everything. Does he really think he needs a gift from someone like him? Yao Bin said that just like Y Kai said, Grandpa Mo doesn't need anything, so he wants to give him 10 years of life. All the guests immediately fell silent, and Y Kai angrily said that he knows that he wants to please Grandfather Mo and Mo Shi Yao, but telling tall tales is not good. Grandpa Mo stood up from his chair, and Yao Bin asked him to say his full name. 
Grandpa Mo replied that his name was Mo Cheng Zong, and Yao Bin fixed something in the system. After that, he said that everything was ready. He extended his life by ten years. Grandpa Mo asked, Is this true? Yao Bin looked at the system window in which the date of his death was written. He was supposed to die in a year, but now he will die in ten years. Yao Bin confirmed Grandfather Mo's words and said that he congratulated him. The guests began to whisper, Is that all? He just closed his eyes for a couple of seconds and said that he gave him ten years of life. Isn't he a scammer by any chance? Huming shouted that he only blinked quickly. How could he give Mr. Mo ten years to live? He thinks he's trying to seem mysterious. Does he play with them? Yao Bin asked, then what should he do to make him believe? Huming replied that he should show how he could control the fate of another person. Yao Bin waved his hand and said that he agreed. Today he will have a bloody incident. Huming told him to go to hell and said that he was the one who would get hurt today. Yao Bin came closer and started counting down. Huming said that he shouldn't try to deceive him, he doesn't believe it. Yao Bin took a step towards him again, and Huming said that he should not think that he could scare him. He's not afraid. The other guests began to move away from him, and Yao Bin finished the countdown. At the same moment, a chandelier began to fall from the ceiling, and Yao Bin jumped on Huming, pushing him to the side. But Huming still managed to get hurt and said that it hurt so much. One of the guests asked what happened now. It can't be. He's the real lucky guy. Grandpa Mo waved his hand and told his subordinates to take him to the hospital. After that, he hit the floor with his crutch and said that whether Yao Bin's words were true or not, he could check for himself. He doesn't need anyone to meddle in his affairs. Today is his granddaughter's birthday. Let them behave themselves. Do they really want to go against him? The guests remained silent, and Yao Bin rose from the floor and shook off the dust. Mo Xiao laughed and Wai Kai thought that he would not let her fall in love with someone else. A man and a woman approached Yao Bin and said that he wanted to ask something. Could he take a look at his fate? Grandpa Mo pointed to the house with a smile and said that they should go inside to talk. After that they moved into the house and Mr. Cal said that he and Mr. Mo have known each other for more than ten years. He knows him very well. If not for the miracle, he would hardly have paid attention to it. By the way, he needs to ask something. His companion asked if he really believed him. Mr. Cao did not answer her and asked Yao Bin if he could say that his family definitely cannot have children. Zio Shan is still young and his health is also good. However, they have no children. Why? Yao Bin decided to check it in the system and noticed something, then suddenly stood up. He approached Mr. Mo and asked in a whisper if they could talk face to face. He will tell him the reason. Mr. Mo agreed and his companion shouted, Why should they leave? If he really knows, then he should say it here, clearly and clearly. Yao Bin replied that this was due to one date. July 18, 27, it was almost 10 a.m. Zio Shang was very scared, and Yao Bin asked, Does she want him to continue? Mr. Cao asked what he said. Zio Shang hugged him and told Yao Bin that he had a weak heart. Maybe she will tell him herself. Mr. Cao asked what happened in 2007. What are they talking about? Zio Shang whispered to him that there were too many people here. It was difficult for her to do this. She would tell him later. After the banquet, Yao Bin went to the shower and soaped his hair, humming some tune. After that, there was a knock on the door and Yao Bin asked who was there. It's already late. Outside the door, he saw Zio Shan and she asked if she could come in. She sat down on the bed and said that now let him tell how he was able to determine her essence. Chen Zio Shan died around 10 a.m. on July 18, 2007. Yao Bin wiped his hair and said that she should explain something to him. If she's a ghost, why does she want to be around people? She asked why she was living with a living person, right? Does he want to know this? Yao Bin confirmed her words, and she threw him onto the bed, sitting on top of him, and said that a very small boy cannot understand such ordinary feelings. So let him let her teach him a lesson. She lay down next to him and asked how she could leave such a man. A young guy like him makes her tremble a little. She released her claws and cut his neck with them. Then he sharply grabbed her hand and she said that if he knew her secret, then let him go to hell. Yao Bin quickly reacted and threw her away from him and then pinned her down. She asked, is this the almighty Yan Liu Wang network? Who is he? Yao Bin touched his wound and asked if she could first tell him why she wanted to hurt Mr. Cao. She cried and said that she did not harm him, and she is still in the human world for the sake of revenge. Yao Bin was surprised and asked, for revenge? Who does she want to take revenge on? 
She replied that she wanted to take revenge on the leader of the notorious black group from Pan Hai Mukayan. He robbed her family, killed her parents, and even raped her and her sister. He tortured her to death, but he is still alive and unharmed. She can't stand it. She just wants to use Mr. Cao's reputation to find him. She never meant to hurt him. Something appeared in Yao Bin's hand. He said that he understood that she wanted to take revenge. But if she stays with Mr. Cao, then she will absorb all his young breath, and he will die sooner or later. If she leaves Mr. Cao, he will help her take revenge. How's that for her? She smiled and asked, Is this true? Yao Bin confirmed her words and said that, provided that she obeys him, she will never betray him. She immediately hugged him and said that she agreed to this. After that, Yao Bin gave her his robe, and she said that she would tell the truth to Mr. Cao, he should not worry. Yao Bin sighed heavily, and then closed the door behind her, and the system congratulated him on successfully pacifying the female spirit. He received 10,000 units of ritual money. Have him choose one of the basic skills below. He can gain excellent memory, limitless strength, and popularity among girls. Yao Bin thought, popularity among girls. He chose superior memory and said that this skill is more useful. In the morning, Yao Bin came to the gazebo where Mr. Cao was drinking tea. Mr. Cao noticed him, bowed, and Yao Bin asked what he was doing. Mr. Cao replied that she told him everything. He was his savior. Bowing is a necessary action. Yao Bin asked, where is she? Mr. Cao replied that she left this morning. When she was with him, she received a little inheritance. He thinks that the money will be enough for her daily expenses. Yao Bin said that he understood. Mr. Cao shook his head in frustration and said that they had just been in a relationship all these years. In the end, he doesn't know how to react. He put the card on the table and said that this is Cao's unlimited card. As long as it is within his family's ability, he can spend as much money as he wants. He hopes this will sufficiently express his gratitude. Yao Bin became worried and said that he could not accept this. Mr. Cao put the card in his hand and said that he saved him. He must accept this card. Suddenly a man ran up to them and told Yao Bin that there was trouble there. The young lady is in danger. Let him go and examine her as soon as possible. Yao Bin jumped up from his chair and asked what was wrong with her. After that, Yao Bin ran into the house and asked Grandpa Mo how was Mo Shi Yao. Grandpa Mo shook his head and said that he had better see for himself. He pointed to the door and said it was there. Yao Bin entered the room and asked her what happened to her. He saw complete destruction in her room and asked if she was okay. She sat by the bed, burying her face in her knees, and did not answer him. He stopped at the door and asked what was wrong with her. Mo Xiao told him not to come near her. He walked up to her and patted her on the head, saying that it was him, Yao Bin. She doesn't need to be afraid, no matter what happens, he will be there. She hugged it and said that it was looking at her, it was looking. Yao Bin asked what she was talking about. Who was looking at her? She replied that something had appeared on her body. She lifted her shirt and said that recently when she was washing, she discovered this. She showed him the huge eye on her side and said that she thought it was all just an allergy. But when she looked in the mirror today, she saw that it had only gotten bigger. Yao Bin asked, besides it growing, did anything else happen? She replied that lately she had been having nightmares. She even sleepwalked. This had never happened before. This morning, when she got out of bed, she saw herself in the mirror, taking off her clothes. When she opened her eyes wide, she saw the other one looking at her and laughing. She grabbed her head and screamed in fear that she had never laughed like that before, so that person was definitely not her. Yao Bin looked in the mirror and noticed a dark figure there. He came closer and smiled, saying that these were just little tricks. He wounded his finger until it bled, and then he touched the entity in the mirror and it screamed. Meanwhile, somewhere on Mount Pan High, a cry was also heard from one of the small temples. The young sorcerer's head burst and he fell unconscious to the floor. Other sorcerers called out to the master and said that this child had dispelled their magic. And he also used the ability to transmit his voice over a long distance. He is afraid that he knows that they have been playing with him from the shadows. Their master smiled and asked, So what? He intends to meet him in person. Let them come to him. Meanwhile, Yao Bin looked at the broken mirror and walked up to Mo Shi Yao, saying that everything is fine now, she doesn't need to be afraid. Mo Shi Yao hugged him and said that she was still scared, someone was trying to control her. Yao Bin touched her shoulder and asked, did she say that someone wants to control her? Can she guess who it might be? She replied that she didn't know. Yao Bin patted her on the head and said that everything is fine, no matter what happens, he will always be there. 
First he needs to remove that thing on her body. Blood flowed from his nose, and he looked at the huge eye on her side and mentally told himself to calm down. He must not take advantage of the situation. He took out the amulet and then applied it to his eye, and Mo Xiao groaned in pain. Wai Kai suddenly opened the doors and asked what happened. What was that sound? Yao Bin quickly covered her with a blanket, and she said that she was fine. Wai Kai got angry and thought that he liked Mo Xiao since childhood. For him, she is the most valuable treasure. Who is Yao Bin to interfere in their relationship? Mo Xiao's father put his hand on his shoulder and said that if he doesn't try to get what he likes, then others will soon take it. Wai Kai understood what he was talking about and Grandpa Mo asked, What is it? Yao Bin replied that Mo Xiao's problem had been solved, but the culprit was now targeting him. Grandpa Mo came closer to him and said that he would assign several people to him. Yao Bin replied that everything is fine, everything is still under control. Grandfather Mo walked away from him and said that if he had business, he didn't dare detain him, let him wait a couple of days, he would send Mo Xiao to him to thank him. Yao Bin smiled and thanked him, saying that he would go then. Grandpa Mo walked up to his granddaughter and asked if she was okay. She replied that she was fine. Yao Bin walked past Mo Xiao's father and said goodbye to him. He walked very close to Wai Kai and he grabbed his hand, asking, Is his name Yao Bin? Yao Bin confirmed his words and Wai Kai asked, Is he a student at Pan Hai High School? Yao Bin damaged his words and Wai Kai said that he understood. The woman sat down next to Mo Xiao and asked, Is she feeling better? She confirmed her words and her father said that it was good. He looked at the broken mirror and thought that God forbid Yao Bin would ruin his plans. Meanwhile, Wai Kai went out into the corridor and called Ming Wen and said that he had something to tell him. Mo Xiao's father noticed this and thought that let this stinking brat deal with Wai Kai. After all, he has been in love with Mo Xiao for a long time. How can he let Yao Bin leave so easily? A new day has come. Yao Bin returned to school and the teacher asked the students to be quiet. He has something to announce. Firstly, Liu Zai Gang dropped out due to health problems. Secondly, they now have a new boy, Du Min Vin. He will be their new class president. She hopes they will all work together. Thirdly, their school, in collaboration with Tran Yuan Duan, will hold a best high school student competition. The most outstanding participant will receive 10 additional points in the state exam. Du Min Vin will hand out papers to participate. She hopes they will be active. One of the students was happy and asked, 10 points? The competition is unlikely to be simple. Another student asked, so what? Everyone can participate, so they can just try their luck. Yao Bin extended his hand to take the registration form, but Du Ming Vin walked by and Yao Bin exclaimed, why was he the only one who was not given the registration form? One of the girls asked, does Yao Bin want to quarrel with the new headman? Her friend agreed with her and Du Ming Vin stopped. Then he showed the registration form to Yao Bin and said that this is a competition between the best high school students, only a few students will be allowed to the finals. Does he think he can compete with them? Yao Bin stood up from his seat and said that it was his duty to give him the registration form. As for whether he can reach the finals, it depends on his own abilities. Du Min Vin asked, so he means that he can qualify for the finals. Yao Bin asked, why can't he? Du Min Vin took a book from the table and said that he would give him a chance. If he can memorize the article in five minutes, then he will give him the registration form. How about this? Yao Bin agreed, took the book and said that he would try, but he had a condition. Du Min Wien asked what is the condition. Yao Bin said that he will have to learn it. If he loses, he will do something for him. Du Min Wien agreed and sat down on a chair, inviting him to begin. It was time to teach. Yao Bin and Du Ming Wien sat down opposite each other and their classmate told them to begin. A few minutes passed, Du Min Vin slammed the book shut and said that he had finished. Now he would start retelling. Author of the book Wang Bo. The palace of Prince Tang, which was the capital of Yujang Prefecture during the Han Dynasty, will now fall under the jurisdiction of Hongju. He continued the retelling and then finished and asked, How was it? The students were surprised and said that he said everything correctly. It only took him seven minutes. He is a true genius. Their headman is so amazing. Yao Bin sighed, then he put the book down and said that it seems that he has lost. Du Min Vin asked in surprise, what did he say? Yao Bin walked out of the class and said that he says he is tough, he accepts defeat. He no longer needs this registration form. He went outside and watched a basketball game and thought that it was pointless for him to compete for a registration form. 
Why was he so serious? Someone must have secretly asked Du Min Veen to throw it away. Meanwhile, Du Ming Wien left the classroom and called Wai Kai. He said that he had too much opinion of him. Yao Bin is nothing more than a coward. He is not worth their attention. Yao Bin returned to school and one of the students asked her friend, Did she know that the final of the Battle of Wits was tomorrow? If they lose, they will have no chance of winning the competition. Her friend replied that they had no chance anyway. The twins from Wang Yang High School are too cool. Not only do they have brilliant memories, but they are also said to be able to read each other's minds. Not even Du Min Veen can defeat them. Suddenly some guy came up to Yao Bin and said that the director was looking for him. Yao Bin turned around, chewing a loaf of bread, and asked, Director. After that he came to the director and asked, was he looking for him? The director said that the final of the Battle of Wits is tomorrow. This competition will not only give him bonuses, but will also affect the reputation of the school when choosing the most elite. This is very important to them. Could he act as a reserve participant in the competition? Yao Bin was surprised and said that he had not filled out the registration form. How can he participate without checking in? The director tapped him on the shoulder and told him he didn't need to register. As the school director, he will do everything necessary to ensure that his presence is not against the rules of the competition. Yao Bin said a little surprised that he would participate then, but he must keep everything secret about him. The director smiled and told him not to worry. He wouldn't say a word about his secret weapon. He raised the hot drink to his mouth and thought that he didn't care about the school results. He communicates with Mr. Mo, and this could be beneficial for their school. Yao Bin also took a glass and thought that Du Min Veen should wait a little. The next day, everyone gathered in the assembly hall, and the presenter told the teachers and students that today they would find out the winner of the battle. Ruan Zio Dong from Pan High School withdrew from the competition due to health problems, however, they have an alternate participant. Yao Bin came on stage, and the host said that this was Yao Bin from Pan High School. Du Min Veen was very surprised and thought, why him? The presenter said that the competition would begin soon. They will select 20 random students. Each of them will say their name, date of birth, strengths, interests, and talk about their class. The five participants will then answer questions regarding information from these students. The team that gives the most correct answers will win. Well, first they'll see how many questions Du Min Veen answers. Du Min Veen answered the questions and the host said that he had 16 correct answers. Du Min Veen's fans started screaming and said he was amazing. The presenter said that Jian Hai also scored 16 correct answers and his brother Jian Yan gave 18 correct answers. The girls squealed again and said that they loved them. Let the prince of Wang Yang school look at her. She loves him so much. Someone told these girls to shut up. They will still lose to Du Min Wien. The girls from Van Yang school said that if Du Min Wien was so smart, he wouldn't have scored lower than them. Du Min Wien's fans said it was just bad luck and they would get over it soon. Yao Bin thought that he felt like he was at a concert. The presenter said that now let them greet their last participant from Pan High School. His name is Yao Bin. Yao Bin stood up and Du Min Wien thought that his teammate was worse than him. If they want to win, that loser Yao Bin needs to score 18 points to at least tie with Wang Yang School. They definitely won't succeed. After that, Yao Bin answered the questions, and the presenter said in surprise that Yao Bin answered 19 questions. Yao Bin told all the information about his student, and the audience was very surprised. The presenter said that he scored 20 correct answers. She can't believe he gave 20 correct answers. The audience started shouting that he was the best. He is smarter than the twins from Wang Yang School. The new member from Pan Hai is very cool. Why didn't he hear about it before? Du Min Wien started to get angry and thought, how dare he look down on him. The next round will definitely be his. The presenter announced the beginning of the second round. They will give random numbers to the contestants. The team that repeats the most in a certain time will win. And now let them go up to the stage. Suddenly Yao Bin's phone rang and he answered the call. Du Min Veen gritted his teeth and said that he was finished. Yao Bin ended the call and asked the judges if they could change the rules of the competition. He has urgent business. The judge asked what proposals he had. Yao Bin replied that he could oppose both of them. The twins from Wang Yang school asked, is it just him and his brother? How dare he underestimate them? The judge asked if he really wanted to do this alone. Yao Bin damaged his words and said that he wanted to end this as quickly as possible. He asks for forgiveness, he really has urgent matters. The judges began to whisper among themselves, and after that the man said that they agreed with his proposal. 
Yao Bin thanked them for their understanding and said that let the twins start first. Depending on their result, he will decide how many numbers he needs to repeat. The twins thought that even if he did not underestimate them, they would show what they were capable of. The twins rose from their seats and the hosts said that let them meet Jian Hai and Jian Yang. Their time has come. Some time passed, the presenter said that time was up and offered to see how the twins coped with the task. They repeated 2,000 numbers, including 1, 122 three-digit numbers and 878 four-digit numbers. This is an amazing result. Yao Bin turned to the presenter and said that they should only give him five-digit numbers. The presenter asked in surprise, is this true? Yao Bin said that everything is fine, they need to start. The guy timed it and the presenter said that his time was up. Yao Bin opened his eyes wide and numbers began to appear on the monitor. Yao Bin memorized the numbers and said that he was finished. The presenter said that he still had one minute left. Yao Bin replied that everything is fine, he will now begin to repeat them. Yao Bin named all the numbers that he remembered and said that that's all. The judge asked, is that all he can do? Yao Bin shook his head and replied that it was not so. He only needed to remember 2001 to beat their record. He doesn't think he needs to remember anymore. One of the spectators shouted that he was smarter than both of them. The score tilted in their favor. Did they really do this? The girls threw signs on the floor and started shouting at Yao Bin that he was cool. He is the most handsome in Pan High School. They love him. They kept chanting Yao Bin's name and the judge said that his performance was amazing. So he wants him to become his student. What does he think about this? Replied that he was very grateful, but he really had to go. Du Min Wien stopped him and asked what kind of attitude this was. Yao Bin looked at him farfetchedly and Du Ming Wien said that Mr. Chen is the country's leading mathematician. How dare he ignore his offer? Yao Bin replied that it looked like he was trying to suck up to him. He waved his hand and said that he was a disgrace. He didn't propose to him. After that, Yao Bin ran to the hospital and ran into the ward, calling out to his auntie. He caught his breath and asked, Did she say Zio Bei was here? Auntie wiped her tears and Yao Bin asked where is she? Auntie replied that he was late, she had already left. Yao Bin asked what did she tell her? He thought that based on Hai Tian Kai's words, she was now controlled by Mr. Liu. Maybe he's trying to hide her from him. Auntie showed him a badge with a hieroglyph and said that she didn't say a word, she just gave it to her. It scared her. Yao Bin took it and asked, was she alone? Auntie replied that she came here alone. What happened to her? She is all right? Yao Bin told her not to worry. And he lifted her sleeve and showed him the bruise, telling him to look at it. She left immediately after giving it to her. She wanted to stop her, but she pushed her hand away. How can such a girl be so strong? When Guo Shui bullied her, he was the only one who helped her. She just disappeared. Let him tell her the truth, what happened to Zayobe. Yao Bin called out to her, trying to somehow calm her down. Suddenly, the voices of nurses began to be heard in the corridor. One of them shouted that they should quickly call Mr. Chen. The patient in bed nine is vomiting violently. The nurses ran down the corridor and someone said that number 36 was having convulsions. Number 28 is choking, let them call a doctor. A nurse ran into the ants room and told Yao Bin that something had happened, his mother was in trouble. Yao Bin got scared and asked what did she say. He turned and said that he was already on his way, but the ant fell from the bed and began to choke. Yao Bin called out to her in fear and asked what happened. He looked at the thing Zio Bei gave and wondered if it could be because of this. Dark power began to emanate from this thing, and Yao Bin asked to call the doctor as soon as possible. The nurse replied that she had already done this, but right now all the patients on the 19th floor were sick, they did not have enough doctors. Yao Bin asked in surprise the entire 19th floor. Could she keep an eye on Auntie Huang? The nurse agreed, and after that Yao Bin opened the system and his eyes widened in horror when he realized what this thing was. The system said that this was an order from hell, and the hieroglyph depicted on the thing meant death. Yao Bin started biting his nails and thought, are these Mr. Liu's tricks? He risked the lives of all the patients on this floor to observe him. He ran out into the corridor and asked the nurse to take care of his aunt, and he would look for the head doctor. Meanwhile, the doctors scattered to the wards, and Yao Bin told the head doctor that he knew how to save these patients. The doctor asked, does he know how to save them? This is very important, a matter of life and death. There can be no mistakes. They urgently need to be in intensive care. Yao Bin said that everything is wrong. Another doctor shouted, what is he doing? Doesn't he think that just by being on good terms with Mr. Mo, he can do whatever he wants? 
The patients are in terrible condition. If something bad happens, will he take responsibility? The head physician asked Dr. Kira Chen to calm down and told Yao Bin that they were in a hurry. Couldn't he wait until things calmed down and then they could talk? Yao Bin said that this is voodoo. Even if they try to save the patients, they will still die. Dr. Chen said that they are doctors. Treating people is their specialty. If they can't save people, who can? Yao Bin replied that he could. Dr. Chen grinned, and Yao Bin said that they were all in terrible condition. He doesn't think it's anomalous. The head physician said that they could imagine that what he was saying was true. Then can he tell us how he is going to save these people? Yao Bin asked, Is there any large room where all the patients on the 19th floor can be gathered? The doctor confirmed his words and said that there was a conference room here. Yao Bin said, That's good. Let them bring them all there, every one of them. It's very urgent. Immediately after that, the lights in the hospital went out, and the nurses started asking, What is this? Why did the light go out? One of the doctors asked Dr. Th Chen if he was right. It's just that they've been working here for a long time, but they've never seen so many patients needing intensive care at the same time. It's some kind of magic. Another doctor said that maybe someone really uses voodoo magic. Dr. Chen exclaimed that this is nonsense. This does not happen. If anyone dares to say anything else about this, he will be fired. Meanwhile, Yao Bin got fear points and thought it was funny. He is the most scared here, but he is still daring. The head doctor asked Yao Bin what should they do. Yao Bin waved his hand and said that let them move all the patients to the conference room. They need to hurry. Dr. Chen approached the head physician and asked why he allows this boy to be in charge here. Their hospital can't take responsibility if something bad happens. The head doctor replied that Mr. Mo trusted Yao Bin. He must be incredible, so they better do as he says. He will take full responsibility. He started transporting patients and Dr. Chen called out to him. The head doctor turned around and shouted that if he had any complaints, then let him express them later. After a while, all the patients were transported to the conference room and nurses and doctors gathered inside. Dr. Chen looked around and told Yao Bin that nothing was happening. It looked like he was just crazy. If it weren't for him, the patients would be fine. Even if his head was cut off, it wouldn't make up for the damage if something bad happened. The doors to the hall began to open and some kind of dark haze entered the room. Two ghosts appeared in the passage, one black, the other white. The doctors got scared and asked what it was. Doctor. Chen fell to the floor in fear and grabbed Yao Bin's leg, asking him to do something. If he doesn't save him, he will torture him when he becomes a ghost. Yao Bin received fear points again and asked if he was the one who said a few minutes ago that he was wasting their time. Why did he change his mind now? Doctor. Chen fearfully replied that he was joking. Let him hurry up and do something. Suddenly the white ghost waved the broom and told Dr. Chen and Dr. Liu that their time was up. The second ghost waved the chains and said that when time ends, the souls will be collected. Let them die. After that, the black ghost spread chains throughout the chamber and they both began to circle over the people. The nurses and doctors screamed in panic and Yao Bin said that it was a small thing. He extended his hand forward and ordered the ghosts to get rid of them. The ghost stopped, and then the dark haze cleared and both ghosts landed on the floor. At the same time, the master of sorcerers sat in a circle of the corpses of his students and cursed. He wiped away the blood and thought, where did this child even come from? Meanwhile, Yao Bin said that these patients' lives will not end today. How dare they come here? At the same time, the master coughed up blood and his surviving student called out to him. He helped the master get up, and he said that he was just checking on this kid, but he didn't think that he would do anything stupid. His student asked what happened. His master replied that banishing the yin and imprisoning the soul violates the order of yin and yang, so a blood sacrifice must be made and then use one's body to guarantee. Now everything has failed, this boy will follow the tracks of yin and yang and find them. He pointed to the lamp and told the student to quickly break the lamp of soul binding and clean everything here. The guy was very scared and told the master that something was coming here. The man got scared and asked what he was waiting for. He must break the lamp of necromancy. He must pack his things now. The guy starts running towards this lamp and is very worried. He almost reached the lamp, but suddenly they heard a strange sound. Suddenly the chains grabbed all the students who were in this room. The students asked the master to help them and ask what is this. The chains squeeze the students' bodies very tightly and this causes them to cough up blood. All the disciples were killed by these chains. 
The master shakes with fear and tells Yao Bin that he hates him for killing his students. His name is Liu Dafin. If he does not kill himself, he will cease to be human. He notices blood flowing from under the door. He grabbed his knife and stabbed it into his body. The door is knocked down and someone comes inside. Liu Dafin lies with his students in a pool of blood. People begin to collect energy from this room. He opened his eyes slightly and thinks that he is just a child, but he can already order the servants of hell. Apparently, he will have to ask the master for help to cope with him. A few minutes ago at Pan Hai Public Hospital, two monsters are standing near hospital workers. Yao Bin summons the amulet and says that it is the card of the king of hell. Will they still resist? They kneel down and call him highness. He says that everyone who has upset the balance of life and death, yin and yang, cannot be pitied. They must be severely punished. They agree with the master and fly out of the room. The electricity returned and the lights turned on in the hospital. The patient suddenly gets up and says that the darkness is past. The doctor says that the patients are beginning to awaken. Doctor, Chen wonders who this guy even is. The patient kneels before Yao Bin and says that he is grateful to him for saving their lives. The other patients also bow and tell his highness that they are grateful to him. He is the true embodiment of the king of hell. Yao Bin comes up to them and says that they don't need to do this, they should stand up. He can't stand it. The nurse asks Aunt Huang what happened to her. Doctor, Liu comes to her and says that she has urethritis. A lot of time has passed since the last hemodialysis. Now her body has suffered stress. The forecasts are not at all optimistic. Yao Bin asks the director what can they do about this. Doctor, Liu says they can only perform the operation if they find a kidney donor. Doctor, Chen asks the boss. He already knows that they haven't found a single donor. How will they save her? Yao Bin covered his nose and thought that he smelled very strongly. He asks the director, does he mean that if they find the donor, then Aunt Huang will be saved? Doctor, Liu says he's right. Doctor, Chen asks if he thinks this is the same as finding vegetables in the store. She will be able to hold out for about 20 minutes. If he finds her a kidney donor during this time, then he will call him his grandfather in front of everyone. Doctor, Liu says that even if a donor is found, all the necessary tests will take more than 20 minutes, and he is still going to entrust the search to him. He is doing the wrong thing. Doctor, Chen says he's not the one running out of time. If he doesn't have time, let him talk to the patient. He can ask her to hold out longer and not give up. He points his finger at Yao Bin and asks if he is not the king of hell. Then he must not let her die. He grabbed his finger very tightly and asked if there was any way to find out compatibility other than tests. Doctor, Liu says kidney samples are first compared. This step can only be skipped if the samples have already been tested previously. The most important part is comparing blood type, HLA genes, and glands. If there is a match, then the chances will be higher. Doctor, Chen says it sounds pretty simple. But did someone check everything for them? Yao Bin says that until they try, they won't know. Doctor, Chen says that in that case, he should look for it himself. Many patients have gathered near them and ask if he can check it out. She wants to try it too. They should check her kidneys too. She's healthy. He saved their families, so they must repay him. Doctor, Chen says that they should think it over carefully. If he donates a kidney, they will only have one left. It could affect their lives in the future. Doctor, Liu says he should stop saying that. The patients became confused and began to discuss it among themselves. Yao Bin notices that they began to doubt. He says he appreciates their kindness. But doctor, Chen is right. Donating a kidney will make a significant difference in their lives. In that case, he has a proposal for them. The person whose kidney is successfully transplanted will pay premium insurance. Doctor, Chen asks if he is only going to pay 50,000. Isn't that too cheap for a kidney? Yao Bin says that he is not talking about 50,000. Doctor, Chen asks, is he talking about 500,000 then? However, this is still not enough. Yao Bin says that he is not talking about 500,000. He meant 5 million. This surprises Dr. Chen very much, and he asks again. Yao Bin says that he will also spend 1 million to pay for rehabilitation after the operation and other expenses will be on him. Dr. Liu says that as the chief physician, he ensures that the bills for surgery and other services are free of charge to the donor. The girl raises her hand and says that Ju Yu's kidneys were checked just recently. The results are on the internet. The guy says he already had a kidney test. He can check it again. 
The girl says that her husband is the head physician of the second hospital. She can call him and ask if there is a suitable kidney there. Another guy says that he knows a lot of people. Maybe they can help young Yao find a donor. After a couple of minutes, the nurse comes in and tells the head doctor that they have succeeded. They finally found the right person. Doctor, Liu says that's good. Everything is fine now. They should prepare the operating room. He put his hand on Yao Bin's shoulder and said that he needn't worry. He will lead the operation. Nothing will escape from under his hands. He thanked the head physician for this. Doctor. Liu looked at Chen angrily, and it scared him. He asks the gentleman to wait and says that he can be his assistant during the operation so that everything is guaranteed to be fine. The guy stands in front of him and says that he should wait. Did he just decide to leave here? This scared Dr. Chen very much, and he doesn't know what to tell them. The men say that they clearly heard that if Yao Bin finds a donor in 20 minutes, he will call him grandfather in front of everyone. Does he really want to just run away from here? The nurses laugh at him, and the patient says that no matter what happens, he is still the director, and he must be responsible for his actions. Yao Bin put his hand on his shoulder and said that he was just joking when he said that. Moreover, they will still need it in the future, right? This surprised Dr. Chen very much and tries to tell them something. Yao Bin leaves and thinks that he needs to check if the operation is going well. He hopes that everything will be fine. Suddenly, Dr. Chen knelt down, and this greatly surprised the people standing around. The guy says that a minute ago he was seething with rage. So why did he suddenly kneel in front of Yao Bin? The nurse says that he actually knelt in front of the young master. Yao Bin approaches the doctor and asks what he is doing. He should get up. Suddenly, Dr. Chen fell to the ground, his eyes rolled back and blood flowing from his mouth. People were very frightened by this and asked what happened. Wasn't he fine before? Maybe he was already sick and they pushed him too hard. Everyone looks at him and Yao Bin examines his body. He turns to the guy and says that he should hurry up and call the police. He tells the nurse that she should call the doctor here to check on Director Chen. She says she will do it now. Yao Bin looks at the doctor's body and thinks that he needs to check on Aunt Huang and leave that to the police for now. Some time later, he sits near the office, above which hangs a glowing sign indicating that an operation is underway there. Doctor, Liu comes out of the office and says that the operation was successful. Now he can relax. Yao Bin is happy about this news and thanks the doctor for this. Doctor, Liu says that he has nothing to thank him for. She needs to stay here for further examination within the next week. If he needs something, he can just tell him. The doctor runs to them and tells the gentleman that something has happened. This surprises them greatly and Dr. Liu asks what happened. What else happened? The guy says that Director Chen's family is here. They called the media. They need their explanations. Yao Bin asks if this is related to him. The guy moves a short distance away from him and says something to Dr. Liu. He says he understands they must follow protocol as usual. He turns around and says he has to go and deal with this. The guy is surprised by this and is going to say something to the gentleman. He says that they also said that the high school student was the main one in driving Director Chen to death with a group of people. Doctor, Liu says he doesn't have to say anything more. He should just handle this like similar situations before. He should act casual. He should also tell the staff not to give any interviews to journalists. What does he think about this? Yao Bin says he thinks it was a setup. Only two hours had passed since his death. How could his family find out about this so quickly and also call journalists? Isn't that suspicious? Doctor, Liu says he thinks so too. They must have made a fuss on purpose, but they have no proof. Yao Bin says that secrets always come out in the end. Doctor, Liu agrees and says he is right. They hear a strange sound approaching, and Yao Bin thinks that he doubts that he will not be able to find out what is wrong. Some time later, they came to a room where video from cameras was shown on the screens. The guy points to the monitor and says that these are stills of the moment when everything happened. Doctor, Liu says they have reviewed this part many times. There is no evidence here. Yao Bin asks the guard if he could slow down this moment. The guy agrees and he thinks, are there really no traces here? He notices a guy standing away from the crowd of people and says that he should stop the video here. Doctor, Liu asks what happened there. Yao Bin points to this man and tells the guard that he should move a little closer here. He needs to look at this angle. The guy agrees and zooms in on the image. They see a guy with a cart who is watching what was happening. Doctor. Liu is very surprised by this and asks who this is. Yao Bin says it looks like the janitor is now high on the list of suspects. Doctor. 
Liu says they have already performed an autopsy on Chen's body and found nothing strange. Yao Bin says that there are many ways to kill a person, and not all of these methods leave any traces. Doctor, Liu is surprised by this and asks if he means that all this was planned to tarnish him. Then they need to call the police, track down this person, and restore his reputation. Yao Bin says there is no need for this. He knows how to work things out. Some time later, the door opens and he says he needs to go. His mom and Aunt Juan are supposed to stay here for a couple of days. Could he do a favor and look after them for him? First he needs to find that person. Doctor. Liu agrees and says he needn't worry. He will make sure they get the best care they can provide. Yao Bin leaves and types something on his phone. He called Zhao Kai and asked if he sent him a photo. Would he be able to find the person in that photo? Zhao Kai is badly injured and tells the young master that he can count on him. As long as he is alive, he will definitely find this person. Yao Bin says that is good. He apologizes for asking him for this. He wonders what's wrong with his voice. He looked like he had just run a marathon. He starts running and thinks that this can't happen. He says that he urgently needs to run to him. Suddenly his phone starts ringing and he stops. Bai Ku calls him and tells the young master that someone stabbed Mr. Ker Jiao Kai in the back. He should come here quickly. Yao Bin runs out of the hospital onto the street, but the call has ended. He runs onto the road and stops a taxi. He quickly sat in the back seat and asked to be taken to Huang Jia Street alone and quickly. Some time later, Yao Bin walked inside and asked the guy where Mr. Zhao Kai and Bai Ku were. He should tell him quickly. The guy says that he met his friend, but he has not returned yet. Yao Bin grabs his hand very tightly and asks where he is and with whom. The guy screamed because of the pain of being grabbed. He lets the guy go and he says that he heard that they were at Yisia's bar. Did something bad happen? Yao Bin starts to run away and the guy calls the young master. At the same time, several guys hit Bai Tzu with different weapons and say that they should hit him harder. Isn't he strong? He must be in response. The guy grabbed him by the head and lifted him up and said that he was just an idiot. He put him against the wall and says that they will listen to how his master Zhao Kai beats his master Guo. Yao Bin broke through the crowd of people and concentrating his energy in his fist, he said that they must stop. He tells these freaks that he told them to stop. The man asks did he tell them to stop. Yao Bin gets very angry and agrees with this. The men stopped and began to look at each other. They start laughing loudly and ask, is this Zhao Kai so pathetic that he asked a child for help? He bites off more than he can chew. He needs to go home and drink some milk. Bai Ku raises his bloody hand and tells the young master that Mr. Yi Zhao Kai is still there. He must save him. Men ask, is he a young master? Does he mean this child? Yes, he is still very young. The man kicks Bai Tzu and calls him a freak. He writhes in pain and the man says that he should shut up. Yao Bin is very angry and says that he gave them a chance, but they refused it. Men say it's like they need it. He'd better take care of himself. Yao Bin threw a small object very quickly. With this attack, he unexpectedly cut off the leg of one of the men. Because of this, he fell to the ground and began to scream loudly due to pain. The other man asks what just happened. They turn around and notice that he has thrown away a regular hospital medical record. A man left without a leg asks what are they waiting for. They must kill him. They must all attack this freak. Bai Ku stood up and told the young master that Mr. Zhao Kai was waiting for their help. Yao Bin says that he need not worry. He will finish them in one minute. The men start running at him and tell him not to underestimate them. They will beat him so hard that he will beg them for mercy. The man jumps up and is about to attack him with a metal pipe. He does not have time to strike because Yao Bin got ahead of him and struck a strong blow faster. With this attack, he threw him into the other men. The man grabs him and says he caught him. He holds it so they have to hit it faster. Some guys are about to attack him and say he should die. Yao Bin grabbed the guy who was trying to hold him and throws him at the other guys who were about to attack him. He starts spinning this guy around and he asks the young master that he is very sorry and he asks for mercy. Yao Bin doesn't listen to him and throws him at the door. It destroyed glass doors and a pillar. Bai Tzu reaches out to the young master and says that he must be careful. Yao Bin uses his energy and summons a demonic army. Bai Ku grabs him and asks the young master not to do this. Yao Bin is surprised by this and asks what's the matter. He says it's Mr. Kai. Yao Bin is surprised to see Zhao Kai flying towards him. 
Mid-flight, he turns around and tells the young master that he doesn't have to worry about him and stays there. Yao Bin is about to do something and says that he need not worry. He jumps up very high and flies towards Zhao Kai. Having caught him, they went down below and he asks if he is okay. Yao Bin picked him up and very quickly walked inside the building. Bai Tzu is surprised by what he saw and thinks that it is incredible. He had no idea that he could use so much internal energy. He also prevented Mr. Jerry Zhao Kai from falling at the same time. He greatly underestimated his skills. Yao Bin puts this mister down and says that he should rest, and he will take care of the rest himself. Zhao Kai tells the young master that he must take care of himself. A man sitting on the sofa asks, Is this child his assistant? He raises his glass of alcohol and asks, Is he looking down on him? Who is this kid anyway? Doesn't he know that he? Zhao Kai says he doesn't need to do this. Yao Bin says that he is just this mister's bodyguard, so he doesn't need to know his name. Xiao Kai was surprised by what the young master said. The man tells Master Go that he must take care of this wild child. He drinks alcohol and thinks that he can take over half of the Pan Hai market if Xiao Kai dies today. He should rely on this master. Master Go goes to him and greets this guy and asks if he really needs a master like him to beat a simple child. Yao Bin releases his energy and asks what happened is they're doing right. Master Go agrees and says that he did it. So what? Does he now want to avenge him? He honed his fighting abilities and skills. How dare such a child compete with him? Yao Bin says he can just go to him. He will give him three tries. Master Go became very angry about this. He ran to him very quickly. He throws a very fast punch with his hand. Yao Bin easily dodges this blow and says that this was the first attempt. Master Go turns on the spot and throws a very fast kick. Yao Bin dodges this attack again and says that this was the second attempt. Master Go became very angry about this. He concentrates his energy in his body. He jumps up very high and screams in rage. He strikes with his hand and screams loudly in a fit of rage. Yao Bin stopped his attack and he asks is he hitting so slowly. He squeezes his hand with strong anger and says that he has run out of moves, now it's his turn. He throws a quick punch with his hand and this greatly frightened Master Go. With this attack, Yao Bin concentrates his energy on the master's body. This attack destroyed his clothes and he is coughing up blood due to his severe wound. The master was thrown back very strongly and crashed into the wall. The man was very surprised by this and called Master Go. Yao Bin approaches him and says that he will be next. He kneels down and tells the young master that he apologizes for this and hopes that he will spare him. Yao Bin says that to be honest, he is too lazy to kill him. So maybe they should try to find a compromise. He will take money instead of his life. How much does he think it is worth? The man asks, what about 5 million yuan? Yao Bin leans over and asks him, so he thinks his life is only worth 5 million yuan. The man is very afraid of him and asks, what about 10 million yuan? Or maybe 20 million yuan would be better. Yao Bin agrees and says that his life is worth 20 million. They agreed. The man agrees and says that his life is really worth that much. He took out his phone and says that he will send him money right away. Yao Bin points to Master Guo and asks what about him. How much will he pay for it? The man began to panic greatly, trying to figure out how to respond. He picks him up by the head and says that if they don't want it, they can pay for it. Then he might not blame him. The man got scared by this and asks him to stop and says that he will pay for him too. 20 yuan is also enough for his life, right? He gets angry and thinks that if the master dies here, he will be in trouble. Yao Bin agrees and says that he must send 40 million yuan for two lives to his account. The man says that he will definitely send him money. Yao Bin turns around and says that then they will end this. He stopped and said that he forgot about one thing. He should definitely go to Huang Jia Street tomorrow alone and apologize to Mr. Kai. If he doesn't forgive him, then they will have to stay and continue to ask for forgiveness. He approaches Zhao Kai and says that everything is ready. Now they should go home. He helped him up, and he thanks the young master for his help. Yao Bin asks what's the big deal if they are friends. Master Go stood up and asked this child what his name was. He won't get away with it. Yao Bin stops when he heard this. He turns to him and asks what does he mean? Does he really want revenge? Master Guo asks, now he is afraid, isn't he? If he kneels down right now and starts asking for forgiveness, then he will forgive him and they will not kill him. Yao Bin says his name and says that if he wants to find him, he can ask Zhang about it. He leaves with Zhao Kai and Baik. Master Go asks who is this guy anyway. He is not even afraid of the name Liu Zhang. 
at the same time at the exit. Yao Bin puts his friends in a taxi and says that he should be gentler. Xiao Kai gets into the car and says that he is very grateful to him. The taxi drives off, leaving him alone. A system window appears in front of him, in which it is written that for saving so many lives, his accumulation of merit has now been filled. He can unlock the skill to have a 10-minute cooldown. He needs to read the rules before using it. Yao Bin wonders, did he get the time rollback skill? This is an unusual skill. It's time for him to go home, otherwise his mother is waiting for him. Some time later, he walks down the street and thinks Mr. Kenyara's Kai's boss turns out to be Liu Zhang. This is his chance to avenge Zio Shan. A limo stops next to him and a guy calls out to him. He says that they are going to use Zhu's villa. Mo Shi Yao wanted them to join them. Yao Bin says that she did not tell him about this. The guy says that she wanted to surprise him, she wanted to introduce him to new friends. He should go with them, he shouldn't just stand there. Yao Bin thinks that he doubts Du Ming Yuan's enthusiasm. He points back and says he has to get in the car. The man opens the door for Yao Bin and Du Ming Yuan says that he knows that he does not have a car, so he will take him. He gets into the car and is surprised to see several people. The girl with red hair asks if Mo Shi Yao really fell in love with him. He looks very poor. The guy asks if he doesn't have his own car. This is very bad. Du Ming Yuan turns around and says that he is being raised only by his mother and it is difficult for her alone. The girl says that she doesn't think so. It's unfair to judge people by their cover. Maybe Mo Shi Yao loves him for who he is. The girl with red hair asks who is he. No matter how good he is, he cannot be compared with her. The girl was embarrassed and did not know what to answer. Yao Bin asks Du Ming Yuan. He said that Mo Shi Yao will come, so where is she? He is driving the car and turns around and says that he need not worry, she will come later. He looks out the window and thinks that this time he will make sure that he loses his reputation. Yao Bin notices him laughing and wonders what this idiot is up to this time. They travel outside the city for some time. Having arrived at the right time, the guard says that they must stop. This is Yu Zhu's villa. Outsiders are not allowed here. Du Ming Yuan gets out of the car and asks what does this mean. He booked a room here. Why can't he come in? The guard says Mr. Zhu is holding a meeting inside the villa. Bai Wai gets out of the car and asks him not to say that they will now go back like this. Du Ming Yuan asks, didn't she hear what he said? This is Mr. Zhu's order. What can he do about it? Bai Wai is annoyed by this and says that he is completely useless. Du Ming Yuan asks, what does he have to do with it? In that case, she can go and talk to him herself. Yao Bin shows a small card and asks, are you sure he won't change his mind? The guards took this card and are looking at it closely. Du Ming Yuan notices this and asks why he went there. Even if he kneels, they still won't let him through. The guard's hand begins to shake and he wonders, is this the same card of the Zhu family? Then this guy. The guards bow before him and one of them tells this precious guest that they are glad to see him in Yu Zhu's villa. Bai Wai asks what happened. Du Ming Yuan is surprised by what happened and asks how he did it. Yao Bin asks, can the others come in too? The guard points to the entrance and says that of course they can come in because they are his friends. Yao Bin turns to them and asks why they are still standing there. They can go inside. The girl with yellow hair agrees and runs to him. Bai Wai turns to Du Ming Yuan and says that they should go and this makes him very angry. He gets very angry and thinks that he lost to this poor man. He'll see how long this freak can keep acting like this. After some time in the villa room. Yao Bin sits on the bed in a robe and says that today was a very hard day. He feels something under the blanket and asks what it is. Someone hiding under the blanket begins to move and this frightened him greatly. A girl with yellow hair crawled out from under the blanket and asked why he was here. Where is Bai Wai? Yao Bin says that this is his room and he should ask her what she is doing here. The girl says that Bai Wai gave her a room card and said that he will wait for her here. She wanted to talk to her about something. Suddenly someone starts knocking hard on the door. Du Ming Yuan knocks and tells Yao Bin that Mo Shi Yao is looking for him and he should open the door. Bai Wai says he doesn't need to knock, she has a card so she can surprise him. The girl says that they will not be able to open the door because she locked herself when she came here. Yao Bin says that's great. Du Ming Yuan places the card and asks why the card doesn't work. Yao Bin says that it looks like he wants to catch him scheming. The girl asks what should they do now. He takes his phone and asks if she trusts him. The girl agrees with him. Du Ming Yuan knocks on the door and says that Mo Shi Yao is already here. Maybe he will open the door for them. He must open this door. 
Bai Wai asks why he doesn't open the door. Mo Xiao says that she knows Yao Bin well. He will not do anything wrong. A man approaches them, bows and says that he is the manager of this villa, and the man in this room is his master's guest. He hopes they won't bother him. Du Ming Yuan says that the person in this room is Yao Bin, not Mr. Zhu's guest. The man points to another door and says that the young master is actually in the other room. If they don't trust him, he can give them a number card to check for themselves. Du Ming Yuan says that this is a VIP number, which costs 200 880 888 per day. Can Yao Bin afford this? An employee approaches them and tells the director that this is a card for a VIP room. The director says that if young master Do doesn't trust him, then he can check it himself. Du Ming Yuan snatches this card and asks if he really thinks that he won't do it. He places the card in the right place and says that he will not be able to deceive him. Yao Bin comes out of the shower and says that it turns out Mo Shi Yao is here too. Du Ming Yuan is surprised by what he sees and asks how can he be here. This VIP room costs a lot of money for one day. Yao Bin points his finger at the director and says that he told him that he was an anniversary visitor, so he got this room for free. Today, this room belongs to him. Du Ming Yuan asks the director, is what that coward said true? The director confirms this and wonders why he didn't tell him right away that he would be in the VIP room. He put him in a difficult position. Mo Shi Yao approaches Yao Bin and says that he is very lucky. He grinned and said that he was just a little lucky. He strokes her head and asks how she feels. Mo Shi Yao says that she feels much better and no longer sleepwalks. Bai Wai says that Yao Bin's life is always bad. How did he get so lucky? Du Ming Yuan smiles and says that everything is fine. They have another surprise because he asked Master Ma to prepare a special gift for him. Sometime later, morning of the second day, camping area, Du Ming Yuan says that he is confident that he will ruin his reputation this time. Yao Bin sets up a tent, and Mo Shi Yao stands next to him and looks at it. Bai Wai loudly asks from the tent who stole her things. She came out of the tent and said that stealing money was nothing. But why was it necessary to steal this thing? The one who did this has no shame at all. Du Ming Yuan asks her to calm down and asks what has she lost. Bai Wai blushes out of embarrassment and says that she brought new underwear with her, but cannot find it anywhere. The guy with short hair rolls up his sleeves and tells her not to worry. He will look for it for her in the men's locker rooms. He immediately enters Yao Bin's tent and says that he will start from here. He looks at this and realizes that they want to set him up. A guy with short hair runs out of his tent with a set of women's underwear and says that he found this. This is what she lost. He asks Yao Bin, does he have any shame at all? Bai Wai tells Mo Shi Yao that she cannot believe that he is such a person. She stands behind Yao Bin and tries to say something about him. Du Ming Yuan says that the story is about the death of Director Cheng. He is involved in it. He organized this trip to get to the bottom of it, but that's how it turned out. He can't believe he did it. A guy with short hair tells the girls that they should move away from him. Bai Wai says that, however, now they know what he really is like. Mo Shi Yao says that she believes that Yao Bin is not that kind of person, and there was some kind of misunderstanding. The girl with yellow hair says that she thinks so too. What if the tent was unlocked? Anyone could get in there. Yao Bin turns to them and says that he is grateful to them for trusting him. He is very happy and will prove that he didn't do it. He reaches out with his hand to the system window, on which it is written, Time change, ten minutes ago. He says that he wants to die, then he won't have to blame him for it. Du Ming Yuan is scared by this and asks what he wants to do. Yao Bin clicks on the system window and streams of energy appear around him. A funnel appears that sucks everyone in and Du Ming Yuan is very afraid of it and asks what is it. The funnel closes and they are transported 10 minutes ago. The guy with short hair tells Bai Wai that she doesn't have to worry, he'll look in the men's tents. He won't let the freak who did this escape. Du Ming Yuan passes by Yao Bin, who is standing still. He opens his eyes as they all walk past him and thinks that these kids really want to frame him but their so-called proof is no longer where they think. He put this thing in Du Ming Yuan's pocket. A guy with short hair comes out of the tent and says that he searched the entire tent, but found nothing. Du Ming Yuan asks if he is sure about this. He agrees with this. Yao Bin asks, the kidnapper can carry this thing with him, right? The guy with short hair is surprised by this idea and says that maybe they should search everyone who is here. Yao Bin raised his hands and said that he could search him first. He examines it, but finds nothing. Du Ming Yuan also raised his hands and says that he will be next. 
The guy with short hair checks him and says that the young master would never do anything like that and they all know it. He takes out a set of women's underwear and asks what does this mean. This surprised him very much and he says that this is underwear. Du Ming Yuan was very surprised by this and says that it was not him, someone set him up. Yao Bin asks if he wants to say that it was Bai Wai who wanted to frame him. This surprises her and she asks what is he talking about. Du Ming Yuan is embarrassed and says that he is lying. They are both worried about what happened and are wondering what they should do now. Mo Shi Yao asks why he took this thing. It's underwear. Du Ming Yuan says that he didn't take her underwear, he was just framed. She shouldn't listen to this idiot. Mo Shi Yao is afraid of him and loudly asks him not to come near her. He panics and asks her to believe him, he didn't do it. Someone set him up, they should believe him. The girls look at him with contempt. A guard approaches them and asks which one is Du Ming Yuan. He points to himself and says it's him. Why are they looking for him? The guard tells his colleagues that they must capture him. Two guards grab him and Du Ming Yuan asks who they are and what do they want. The guard says they should come with them too. The guards point to the car and ask them to go there. This greatly confused everyone who was here. After some time in the villa, Du Ming Yuan loudly says that they should let him go. If anything happens to him, they will all regret it. The guard pushes him and he falls to the ground. Grandpa Gao tells the guards that they must take away his right arm. This statement greatly surprises everyone here. The guards immediately grabbed him. Du Ming Yuan tries to resist and asks them to let him go. His father is Du Kang, they should not mess with him. Mo Shi Yao asks Grandpa Gao what he did that they should punish him. He says she should come to him. She agrees and approaching him asks him not to be angry with them because they are just children. Grandpa says she won't understand this. He turns to the guard and says that he has to do this. The guard bows and agrees with him. Grandpa says that today is Grandma Gao's memorial day, so he asked him to make these flags. Who would have thought that this child would ruin it? Mo Shi Yao is very surprised when he sees this. Du Ming Yuan is very afraid and says that it was not him. He must believe him. He did not write these words on the flag. Grandpa Gao asks if it's not him, then who is it? He should confess already. The guy with short hair kneels down and says he's sorry. He didn't know that he wanted to use these flags to pray to his grandmother. He just wanted to joke. Grandfather Gao got very angry and stood up and said that they should cut off their hands for his sake. Du Ming Yuan says that he didn't write this. Why does he want to cut off his hand? The guy with short hair says that he won't do this again and asks to spare him. Everyone is very surprised that their hands are about to be cut off. Yao Bin asks them to stop and tells Grandpa Gao that he cannot do this. It's pointless. If he cuts off their hands, then the only thing he'll get is trouble. Du Ming Yuan hits the floor with his fist and asks why he is provoking him. Does he want him to die? Grandfather Gao is surprised by this and asks, Is this young Master Yao? Why did he come to them? Yao Bin says that he came here with his friends. Du Ming Yuan is very surprised by this and wonders, Was he called a young master? The guards release the two guys. Grandfather Gao approaches the young master and says that he should have said that he was coming here so that he could prepare for his arrival. If he likes it here, he can stay here for a couple of days. They will provide them with the best service. Yao Bin says he is grateful to him, but there is no need. He didn't want to disturb him, so he didn't announce his arrival. Grandpa Gao asks when did he come here? Yao Bin says that he came here yesterday. Grandpa Gao turns to the guard and says that he should go to the manager because he is responsible for everything here. He told them that if the owner of the golden card came, they should inform him about it. And what does he see now? Mr. Gao has been here for the second day, and he is only finding out about this now. Du Ming Yuan is very surprised by this and wonders, does this freak have a golden card? Yao Bin put his hand on Grandpa Gao's shoulder and said that it was not their fault. The hotel manager was very nice to him. Grandpa Gao asks, if the young master says so, how much do they pay the hotel manager per year? The guard says he gets 5,000 yuan. Grandpa Gao says that he should go and give him 2 million yuan. He must remember to tell him that the additional 1.5 million yuan was given to him for helping Yao Bin. Does he want him to spare their lives? The guy with short hair grabs the young master to force him to spare them. He shouldn't have done this. He asks him to be merciful. Yao Bin turns to Du Ming Yuan and asks, what about him? What does he think it would be like to lose an arm? He kneels down and asks him to forgive him. Yao Bin smiles and tells Grandpa Gao that they ruined the prayer flag. He won't let them get off so easily. Du Ming Yuan gets very angry, but is restrained by a guard. 
He asks if they have already apologized, then what else does he want? The guard slaps him in the face and says that the young master is speaking now, so he shouldn't interrupt him. Grandpa Gao asks what does he mean. Yao Bin says that he knows what to do with them. This is not to clear them, but to catch up. Grandpa Gao asks, did he say something missing? Does he know what to do? Yao Bin agrees and says that however, he must make sure of one thing. Du Ming Yuan must answer him one thing. Is he a virgin? This question greatly confused him. Everyone looks at him and waits for his answer. Du Ming Yuan asks if he is trying to piss him off. Yao Bin asks if he can simply answer yes or no. The guard grabbed him by the clothes and, raising his other hand, asked why he didn't answer him. Du Ming Yuan was afraid of this and answered his question positively. Yao Bin says that's good. Could Grandpa Gao ask his people to leave? All the guards immediately stood around Grandpa Gao and this confused him. He got angry and asked if they didn't hear him. They have to get out of here. The guards agree and leaving the room they close the door behind them. Grandpa Gao asks what should they do next. Yao Bin looks at the system window and asks what is his wife's name. Grandpa Gao says his name is Jia Roman 11 Ru. Yao Bin enters this name in the system window. A system window appears in front of him in which it is written that Jia Roman 11 Ru is from the Yin family, age 20 years old, cause of death killed, resident of hell. Yao Bin looks at this and thinks that means she was killed. He presses a button in the system window. An item appears in his hand, and he thinks that it looks like he will have to use the Yan Wang sect. He raises his hand with this object and says that the black guard, the white guard, he orders them to take his soul to the kingdom of the dead. Suddenly a ray of light hits the building from the sky. Du Ming Yuan falls to the ground as foam begins to flow from his mouth. Mo Shi Yao was surprised by this and asked what was happening to him. The girl with yellow hair says it looks very scary. Du Ming Yuan's face changes, he smiles and moves very strangely. Suddenly he stops, and this greatly confused everyone who was in this room. Someone asks why he doesn't move. Bai Wai asks Yao Bin what did he do to him. He waves his head to indicate that he won't tell her. Du Ming Yuan asks what happened. Why is she lying on the ground? This confused Bai Wai very much, and she looks at him in surprise. Du Ming Yuan dusts himself off and says that she hates the earth because it is dirty. Bai Wai says that he acts just like a girl. Grandpa Gao is very shocked by this and asks, Is this Jia Roman 11 Ru? She turns and looks at him and asks, Is he Shen? They hug and he asks, Is it really her? People are shocked by what happened and ask what is happening here. Jia Roman 11 Ru starts to cry, but Grandpa Gao consoles her and tells her that she shouldn't cry. Yao Bin tells him that he must hurry, he has 15 minutes. After that he will need to send her back to hell. Grandpa Gao wipes his tears and agrees with him. He turns back and asks his wife if she remembers that he once gave her a box. Where did she put it? He had been looking for it for 20 years. Jia Roman 11 Ru asks, did he say box? She pushes him away and this greatly surprises him. She asks he called her for this box, right? Grandfather Gao says that this is not so. He called her not only because of this box. Yao Bin thinks, are they talking about some kind of box? He answers the phone and asks Mr. Kai. Did something happen? He tells the young master that he has found him. Yao Bin asks, is he okay? Kai says he died a year ago. This news surprises him very much. He turns around and thinks that head teacher Cheng was killed by a strong blow to the head. Zion Bei and Zio Shan are also dead, but they look like living people. Mo Shi Yao runs up to him and calls him loudly. Yao Bin turns to her and asks what happened. He is very surprised when he sees what is happening. Mo Shi Yao tries to stop Jia Roman 11 Ru, who is strangling Grandpa Gao. She asks him to save Grandpa. Yao Bin approaches Jia Roman 11 Ru from behind and hits him hard in the back of the head. He massages his hand and asks what happened here. He was only briefly distracted by a phone call. Why did she suddenly become an evil spirit? Grandpa Gao says everything is fine. Most likely it was because of the question he asked. Yao Bin approaches Du Ming Yuan's body and examines it. He examines the eyes and says that it looks like she has already returned to hell. Grandpa Gao says that everything was supposed to be like this. Yao Bin grabs Mo Shi Yao's hand and says that he thinks they should stay here. Grandfather Gao agrees with the young master. He says they can feel at home here. Yao Bin leaves the room and asks what is he doing here. He approaches the guy and asks what is he looking at here. He must take Du Ming Yun away. He agrees and after taking it they all leave this building together. Grandpa Gao stands still and looks at them. He calls Gao Pan. 
A man kneels next to him and asks what he wants him to do. After some time, at the parking lot of Yuzu's villa, a guy with short hair put Du Ming Yuan in the back seat of the car they arrived in and says that he did it. He closed the car door and Mo Shi Yao asks Yao Bin if he will go to the same place with her. It's only one station away from the bus station, he doesn't have to go with them now. A girl with yellow hair sits in the car and says that they can also go there right now. Yao Bin says that she saved them and they didn't even thank her. Mo Shi Yao turned and looked at the guy with short hair angrily. He runs up to him and says that she is right, he has not yet thanked the young master for saving his life. He can say what he loves and he will do anything. Yao Bin says there is no need for this. The guy with short hair asks how he was able to summon the servants of hell. Maybe he will become his teacher and teach him this. It was very cool, she hit him so cool. Yao Bin ignores him and tells Mo Shi Yao that he has to go. She says that they will see each other again and wishes him a safe journey. The guy with short hair tells the teacher that if he needs help, then he should tell him and he will help them. Even death does not frighten him, he will come to complete the mission. Yao Bin starts running away from him and the guy shouts that he should find him when he needs help. He thinks his teacher looks handsome even when he runs. Some time later at the bus stop on the mountain, Yao Bin asks, is this guy covered in glue? Why was he so stuck to him? Ten minutes have already passed, where is his bus? He notices a hooded man standing next to the bus stop. Yao Bin wonders when did this person come here. A bus drove up to them and stopped next to the bus stop. He got on the bus and paid for the fare with his card. He is surprised when he notices that there is no one at the stop. He wonders where that man went, although it doesn't matter. He doesn't have to look for it, so he just has to forget about it. Some time later in the city hospital, Yao Bin passes by a nurse who is talking on the phone. He approaches the right door and is about to enter. He turns around and notices a hooded man standing in the empty hallway. The guy takes off his mask and shows his face. Yao Bin notices his face and wonders if this is not the man from the bus stop. He starts running after this guy and asks him to stop. He runs around the corner where the guy went. He notices this guy leaving in the elevator. Yao Bin runs up the stairs behind the elevator and thinks that it is definitely him. It was he who blamed him for Mr. Chen's death. He dared to appear at the hospital. He went down to the ground floor of the hospital, where the morgue is located, and was breathing heavily due to fatigue. He moves on and asks why they are doing this. He must show his face. Suddenly the door closes behind him and he notices it. Suddenly the doors behind which the corpses lay begin to open. The corpses begin to rise and get out of their places. Yao Bin notices this and asks, are they manipulating corpses to fight him? Many animated corpses begin to make sounds and attack him. Due to this attack, a large amount of dust is raised. Yao Bin pushes them away with his energy and says it's a shame they didn't take full advantage of Yan Wang Jao. He scatters the corpses that attacked him around him and says that if this is all they can do, then they should give up the idea of killing him. Suddenly a strange energy begins to descend from the ceiling. Many purple hands begin to emerge from the walls and ceiling of the room. A system window appears in front of Yao Bin, in which it is written that an event has occurred, the appearance of Gu Zhang Wan. Second palace, king of hell, yin male gender, strength of the ninth level, difficulty level of the ninth, you should be careful because it is difficult to control. Yao Bin says that he chooses him, but with one condition. Part of his face changes, and he asks does he really have a choice? He uses Gu Wan's power. The spirit of a man appears behind him, and he asks, does he want to kill him? He releases his strong energy around him. He creates a tornado of magical energy into which he pulls living corpses. The entire room is engulfed by its energy and the monsters begin to shake in horror. Yao Bin releases a lot of energy around him and says that they should come here. Whoever wants to try their luck should approach him. This greatly frightens the monsters who stood around him. Suddenly a sphere appears in the room, which absorbs his energy. The spirit of an old man appears in the room, with energy hovering around him. He opens eyes of different colors, which are filled with energy. The spirit that Yao Bin summoned goes to the spirit that absorbed his energy, and he asks Qin Guang Wan where is he going. The spirits begin to communicate with each other. Yao Bin looks at this with great surprise and asks, is he an idiot? Why did this happen so suddenly? Both spirits turned to him and looked at him. He was surprised by this and asks what happened. The spirits bow before him. Yao Bin becomes curious, what did Qin Guang Wang say? 
A system window appears in front of him, in which it is written that Qin Guang Wang convinced Chu Zhang Wang, and he surrendered unconditionally. The prize is won, the Ming Palace is opened, and 50 million yuan of the underworld is opened. The spirits leave with a joyful look and continue to communicate with each other. Yao Bin looks at these two joyful spirits with confusion. He sighs and asks where is this watchman when he is needed. He notices the guy he was following and says that he found him. He takes out a sheet of paper emitting a bright light and says that everything is not as simple as it turned out. He sticks it to the guy's face and says that he must go and find his master. Some time later in the flower garden of the villa in Pan High. Two men watch the scene through a jug of water. Suddenly the jug bursts and the water scatters. The man asks how did this happen? How can a demon destroy the barrier of hell? Mr. Jing Chu Jia Wan has surrendered. The second man stood up and said that he was not blind, he saw everything. The man asks when he did all this, did he know that this guy could find out about where they live? He gets angry and says that he was careless and that is why he lost some of his students. Jing asks if he thinks he's an idiot like him. When the barrier was destroyed, he immediately cut off all ties with the puppet. Now it's just an ordinary corpse. The man thinks he is so young, but already has a lot of experience, and he is extremely careful. He notices a guy on the water with a piece of paper on his head and says that this is not good. Jing asks what happened. The man points to the water and tells the gentleman that it is not good. His hand starts shaking and he says that this guy will come here now. He even thought of using an inverted talisman to find them. Jing says it looks like he wasn't careful enough with this child. After some time, somewhere near the Pan High Villa, Yao Bin goes after the person he attached the talisman to. A man enters the territory of one of the buildings. He takes a photo of the sign at the entrance and thinks that he needs to ask Mr. Kaikai to find information about this person. He wrote, can he help him find information about this person? Kai writes that he is a very famous magician in Zhongbi, young but talented, he has support from people of high class. Yao Bin wonders how he could offend such a person. He is surprised to hear an alert sound on his phone. Kai writes to the young master that if he has time, he can come to him, he learns some information about him. Yao Bin leaves and wonders what he found. Why should they meet in person? He needs to find out. Some time later, he came to the right place and noticed Bai Tzu, who runs towards him and calls him young master. Yao Bin asks, have they seen Mr. Gao today? Bai Ku says that guy came today to apologize, he beat him back then, he was so scared that he was almost on his knees when he apologized to Master Kai. He hugged Yao Bin, and going inside, he said that Mr. Kai was waiting for him inside, he would show him the way. He remains outside the door to the room and tells the young master that he should talk to him, but for now he will go and prepare tea. Yao Bin thanked Bai Ku for this. Zhao Kai smokes a cigar and tells the young master that he should sit down. He sat down in front of him, asking what did he learn about Jing Qi Li. Zhao Kai tells the young master that he knows that he works for the Mo family. Yao Bin agrees and says that he knows about it. Zhao Kai puts out his cigar and says that he also knows that Madame Mo loves him. The relationship between him and the lady is good. Yao Bin asks what does he mean? Does Jing Qi Li have any connections with Grandpa Mo? Zhao Kai opens his desk drawer. He takes out a large stack of papers and says that his people found this document. Mr. Haramo bought this villa for him. Yao Bin looks through these papers and asks who he really is. Zhao Kai says that he is just an ordinary servant, but he cannot find out who he works for, but he will figure it out. Yao Bin, getting up, put the documents on the table and said that he was grateful to him for this. Zhao Kai is surprised by this and asks the young master where he is going. They can sit a little longer. Yao Bin leaves and says that he works for the Mo family, he doesn't want him to get in trouble for this. Bai Ku comes to them and asks the young master why he should leave so soon. He asks Mr. Kai what happened to him. Zhao Kai says that he should start the car. Some time later. He rides in a car and arrives at Zhu Luo's estate. They go inside the villa and Mo Chang Zong was writing something on a piece of paper and dropping his brush, he asks what he said. Zhao Kai says that he was careless and left some traces. So young master Yao could reach him. Yao Bin asked him to find this person. Mo Chang Zong became very angry and swept away everything that was on his desk and said that he was becoming more and more self-willed. Zhao Kai asks him to calm down and says that he did not tell him everything. He can go and he'll figure it out on his own. Mo Chang Zong exhales as he goes to the window and says that then he apologizes for this. 
Gu Roman Eleven comes to them and asks what he wants to do. Here, punishment is mandatory. Mo Chang Zong says that after two days, they should go and pick up the young master. They must escort him here. She bows and agrees with him. Sometime later, near the gate of the oldest Pan High School, Yao Bin walks down the street with other people. An expensive car drives past people, and it surprises the people passing by. Gu Roman Eleven speaks through the open car window and tells the young master that she has come to pick him up. They leave and the remaining people, looking at it, ask, Is this a rich student from their school? This car is from a limited edition. Who was that? Sometime later at Zhu Luo's estate, Mo Cheng Zong tells his subordinates that they must prepare tea from that tree and bring it to them. Gu Roman Eleven tells Mr. Bersti Yumo that it looks like Yao Bin is a very important guest. I remember once a young lady asked him for this tea, but he refused her, saying that it was too rare. Yao Bin says he is grateful for his kindness. Mo Cheng Zong says that he actually invited him to apologize. Yao Bin asks what he wants to apologize for. Mo Cheng Zong says that before Mo Shi Yao fell ill, he was introduced to Jing Qi Li. He used his magic to cure her, so he gave him the estate as a token of gratitude. However, yesterday he heard that he wanted to harm him. He didn't want any misunderstandings between them, so he invited him to talk to clear things up. Yao Bin thinks that everything is clear to him now. Mo Cheng Zong says that what's more, he still hasn't formally thanked him. If he doesn't mind, he can take Zhu Luo's estate. Yao Bin was very surprised by this and said that he could not accept it. It's too much for him. Mo Cheng Zong is shocked by this and asks if he really doesn't like this gift. Yao Bin says that's not true at all. That's not what he meant. Mo Cheng Zong says that if he doesn't mind, then so be it. He will leave him several servants, and they will look after his mother and himself. Yao Bin agrees and says that if he has decided so, then he will not refuse. Mo Cheng Zong says that's good, Gu Roman Eleven will come to see him, they will prepare the papers, he just needs to sign it. Yao Bin is shocked by what happened and agrees with him. Sometime later at the main gate of the hospital, Gu Roman Eleven tells the young master that she will not go, she hopes that he will remember to say hello to his mother from her. Yao Bin agrees and says that he will definitely pass it on. He comes into the room and tells his mother that it is him. He is surprised when he saw something. He sees a girl changing clothes and is surprised to see him. Yao Bin was very embarrassed when he saw her. He closes the door and says that he is sorry for this, he didn't mean it. He was very surprised by this and asked what it was. He thinks that however her body was perfect. He looks at the sign and says that this is definitely his mother's room. How inconvenient it turned out. The girl left the room and asked who he was and why he entered without knocking. Yao Bin is embarrassed looking at her and says that this is his mother's room. He did not expect that there would be anyone there besides her. The girl is surprised and says that she understands he is Yao Bin. It's not his fault she was late for work today and didn't want the manager to find out about it, so she borrowed his mother's room. She points to her name tag and says her name is Lu Xiaofei. This badge has her name on it, in case he forgets, she was assigned to look after his mom. Yao Bin looks at her and says that he is counting on him then. Where is his mother? Lu Xiaofei says that it is hot in the ward and she decided to take a walk. Yao Bin leaves and says that he will go and look for her. He notices a system window that says a demon has been detected. Lu Xiaofei stands behind him and smiles evilly. After some time in the elevator, Yao Bin wonders, is this girl really a demon? He can't believe it. The system notifies that the type is demon, gender is female, specialty is enchanting, level 5. Lu Zio Fei calls on the phone and says that she saw him. He doesn't have to worry because he's just a child. Of course she will do it, she will succeed. Sometime later, Yao Bin sits next to the bed where his mother is lying. He hears the sound of knocking on the door and takes notice. He opens the door and asks who came here so late. Lu Xiaofei stands in a dress and asks if he could help her. The zipper on her dress got stuck. He can pull the clasp up, it's stuck, but she herself can't do it. Yao Bin is very embarrassed, but agrees. They went to the toilet. Lu Xiaofei asks him to be careful and not break the zipper. Yao Bin starts trying to zip up, and she says that he scratched her. He zips up and says everything is ready. Is that what her perfume smells like? Lu Xiaofei turns to him and agrees, saying that if he wants, he can smell it closer. She releases her energy through her mouth and channels it into Yao Bin's body. She touches his lips. Suddenly, they hear a loud knock on the door and it stops her. He leaves and says that he will go open the door. 
The guy wishes the master good evening and says that he came to visit his mother. He turns to the crowd of guys with gifts and says that she is here, they should bring her gifts. People agree with the young master. Yao Bin stops them and says that she is sleeping now. He doesn't want to wake her up, right? The guy turns around and asks with an angry look, did they hear him? They must leave here immediately. Why didn't they think about this right away? There are too many of them, it will irritate the patient. Yao Bin wonders, aren't they all here because he ordered them? Lu Xiao Fei comes out of the toilet looking very angry. She sits on the sofa and applies makeup to her face. The guy asks who is she. The master was doing something with her and they interfered with him. Yao Bin says that he was just about to say that until he interrupted him. The guy asks the master what her name is. He had already seen it somewhere. Yao Bin throws him out of the room and says that it was too unconvincing. They say goodbye, but he wants to sleep. The guy thinks hard, trying to remember her and asks where he saw her. He is sure that he saw her somewhere? Perhaps it was in a bar. He remembers that she was with a man. Yao Bin stopped and asked, did he talk to the man? Does he remember who it was? The guy asks, doesn't he see that he's trying to remember this? He should let him think. He remembered, most likely it was Jing. He is 23 years old, but he looks young. Yao Bin asks, is he talking about Jing Qiuile? The guy agrees and says that it was him. He then even asked a friend why his mother came up with such a ridiculous name for him. Then he... He doesn't have time to finish because Lu Xiao Fei closed his mouth and asks Yao Bin if she can talk to him a little outside. He asks Master Ma to look after his mother. He agrees and says that he can count on him. He waves at them and tells them that they should come back quickly. Some time later in the hospital garden, Lu Xiao Fei asks Yao Bin, does he know why she brought him here? She runs her finger over his body and says that he can try to guess. He is embarrassed and says that he does not know this. Lu Xiao Fei hugs him, and Yao Bin asks, what is she doing? She asks, is there something wrong with this? Doesn't he like her? He can remain silent, she already knows everything. She puts her hand under his t-shirt and says that she knows what he likes. Jing Qiuila says that Master Lu does it in his own way, more efficiently. This guy is defenseless against demons, this time he won't get away from them. The man says that he will die at the hands of a beautiful lady. Lu Xiao Fei continues to hug Yao Bin and licks his ear. Jing Qiuila watches this with excitement and says that she has already started. He and the man watch this while standing on the roof. They say that this time this freak, he will definitely die. Lu Xiao Fei's nails enlarge, and with a surprise attack, she says that he must die. Yao Bin stopped her hand and asked, What is she doing? She got scared by this and says she doesn't do anything. She wonders why she can't move. Yao Bin pushes her away with his energy and tells this demon that he knows about her ability to seduce and hypnotize men. This trick will not work with him. He wasn't wrong, was he? Lu Xiao Fei lands after this attack and asks if he knew this from the beginning. And he still acted carefree. Yao Bin asks, didn't she act stupid too? He just pretended he didn't know anything. If they want to kill him, then he is forced to do the same. Lu Xiao Fei begins to run towards him very quickly, leaving traces of destruction on the ground. Yao Bin creates a magical barrier that surrounds him. She runs to him very quickly and asks if he really thinks that this shield will stop her. She strikes with her hand and laughingly says that they will see how it will protect him. She is very surprised that she could not hurt him with this attack. Yao Bin strikes using his energy and pushes her back hard. He tells this lady that he was just giving her a chance to attack first. Lu Xiao Fei is very surprised when she notices that he has disappeared. Yao Bin moved with great speed and ended up behind her. He grabbed her head and it scared her very much. Energy appears from under his hand. He releases very strong energy and Lu Xiao Fei begins to scream very loudly in pain. Master Liu was very surprised by what he saw and asked, was he able to kill Lu Xiao Fei? Jing Qiuila asks if he can kill a demon with just one blow. What kind of monster is he? He thinks he can't believe this guy is so strong. Master Liu continues to look around and asks where is he. Jing Qiuila asks where did he go. Master Liu turns around and notices something strange. He saves Jing Qiuila and says that he must be careful. They notice Lu Xiao Fei's body falling next to them. Jing Qiuila is very scared by this and says that he seems to know that they are here. He is about to say something to Master Liu, but he was no longer here. This surprised him very much, and he does not understand what is happening. Yao Bin very quickly found himself in a dark place next to him, and says that he really knows that they are here. 
Jing Qiyla jumps away from him, frightened by him, and concentrates his energy in his hand. He waves his hand and releases his energy towards Yao Bin. His energy forms a big fist and says that he must watch carefully. Yao Bin dodges this attack very easily. He turns around and notices that this liquid is repelled from the roof and turns around. The liquid has greatly changed its trajectory and is flying towards him again. Yao Bin wonders if this liquid turned out to be alive. He may see it as a challenge. He turns around and notices that the liquid has formed into a blade and is heading towards him. At the last moment, he manages to stop it with his hand. He took out the talisman with his other hand and asked, Is he going somewhere? And he thought he could kill him with it. He raises his hand with the talisman up and releases a very bright energy, which scared Jing Qiyla very much. The liquid begins to disappear due to this energy. Yao Bin waves this talisman and asks, Is this all he can do? Jing Qiyla's hand shakes, and he says that of course this is not so. He is capable of much. Yao Bin says that's good, then he will give him another chance to attack. Jing Qiyla put his hand behind his back and says that he will regret this. He could easily kill him. He blows out some smoke and says that he must watch carefully. Yao Bin covers his head with his hands and starts coughing because of this smoke. He notices that Jing Qi La has run away and says that he is now acting like a pathetic rat. How can he use such pathetic tricks? He became very angry watching him run away at great speed. Jing Qi La runs as fast as he can and thinks that he will not let this idiot kill him. Yao Bin created a flame from his energy at his finger and says that he can run and he will see who hired them. Sometime later, in the Mo family's private building, Mo Xiao's father says that now he understands what happened. Jing Qiyle and Master Liu stand in front of him and want to say something. He asks how many times has he warned him to be careful. He gets angry and says that his grandfather found out about this. Now all his plans have gone downhill. They both say they are very sorry. Mo Xiao's father turns to the window and says that now they can't touch it. Master Liu was very surprised by this and asked if he had really changed his mind about killing him. Jing Qiyla says that he is too strong, they must kill or subdue him now before he gets even stronger. Mo Xiao's father says they don't have to worry, he has another way to make him their person without revealing his identity. He puts his hand on Master Liu's shoulder and says that if rumors are to be believed, Yao Bin and Liu Zhang are not on the best terms. Now he understands what needs to be done. He and Jing Qi Le realized this and laughed. A guy with short hair is standing on the street. A guy passing by asks him why he is here. He says that he is waiting for someone. A girl walking with this guy asks if this is a girl. The other girls say she must be special. They should see who it is. The guy with short hair says that this is not his girlfriend. They shouldn't interrupt him. This is his friend. This is the bravest person he has ever met in his life. He first met him at Yu Su's villa. It was a quiet night. At the same moment, Yao Bin comes to him and greets him. The guy with short hair hugs him and says that he's finally here. He was surprised by this and says that he should remove his hands. He heard something about personal space. A guy with short hair points to the building and says that he will take him to his room. Yao Bin says that he can walk there on his own and he should leave him behind. The girls ask, I feel sorry for him, don't I? Is he one of Ma's people? A man lights a cigar and the people next to him say that Hua Ma is greeting them. It's offensive. The guy next to this man asks, Is this rat better than Da Hua? A man enters the building and says they have to go. Several people were sitting inside, and there were many bottles of alcohol on the table. The guy with short hair tells the master that he should eat some fruit. Yao Bin, although he doesn't want it, says that he will eat just a little. Da Hua hands over the box and tells Mr. Ma that it is a birthday present. The guy with short hair is surprised by this and thanks him for it. He opens the box and people who saw this gift ask with great surprise, Is this really the clock of the six oceans? Da Hua asks, He must be Mr. Ma's friend, right? Yao Bin agrees with this. He asks, What did he give him? He came here with nothing, right? He must show his gift. Yao Bin says that he forgot about the gift, so he will give it next time. The guy with short hair was embarrassed by this and says that he doesn't need gifts. The main thing for him is that he just came. The mere presence of the master is already a gift for him. Da Hua says he will need to catch up. Mr. Ma should move away. He calls the waiter and pointing to Yao Bin asks him to bring them a bottle of wine from 1992. He will pay for it. The waiter agrees with him. The guy with short hair tells the master that he doesn't have to worry. He'll pay for it. 
Dahua was surprised by this and says that he didn't give him anything, so let him pay, it will be fair. Yao Bin agrees and says that they can drink at his expense. Dahua turns around and asks did they hear that. He pays for the alcohol. People say she will take a certain drink. He wants a bottle of Gaobing. She will drink it too. Dahua asks how much will all this cost. The waiter says that all this will cost 520,000 yuan. Yao Bin asks in surprise, did he say 520,000? He thinks that's quite a lot. Dahua asks if this is really very expensive for him. The guy comes up to him and says that he has probably never even seen such money. The girl behind him laughs at this. Dahua says he should wait, he said he would pay for it. Yao Bin gets up and says that he is probably not welcome here, he says goodbye to them. The guy with short hair is surprised by this and calls the master. The girl gets angry and says that he should wait and pay for the wine first. The guy agrees and says that he can't just leave. The other girl says he can't take back what he said. The waiter brings several bottles of alcohol and says that he has brought the order. Dahua is surprised by this and asks who already ordered this. Who will pay for this? The waiter says that Mr. Yao paid for all this. Dahua is very surprised by this and asks what did he just say? The waiter says that he said Mr. Yao paid for this birthday. The girl is very surprised by this and asks how much did it cost in total. The waiter says it cost 28 yuan. People are shocked by this and wonder if he is really that rich. The guy with short hair hugs the master and says that he is such a good person, but he didn't have to do this. Yao Bin wonders if someone did this under his name.